Hello everyone and welcome back to an Iron Plays. I am as always an Iron and today we're going to be playing Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. Now if you don't really recognize what that is, Future Connected is the epilogue story of Xenoblade Chronicles. The first one, the original Xenoblade Chronicles. We just finished playing Definitive Edition and now we are moving on to the epilogue Future Connected. This will be a complete first time for me. I've played Xenoblade in the past, played a, a little bit of Xenoblade Chronicles before finally getting to it and playing it all the way through here on stream. You can still find that stream. Those streams are available to watch now from beginning to end. Uh, but this one, this one is new, and actually, it's a lot newer than I thought it would be. Because the mechanics are different. It's a very different game. It's not the same as Xenoblade Chronicles. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting into this one today to start this journey. It's going to be a short journey, it shouldn't take uh, too many streams. Hey, it might even be just this one, but um, I think it's going to take at least two streams to get through this. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's not often you get to find out what happens a year later after a game is finished. Most of the time, when a game comes to an end, that's the end. And you're left to assume how people's lives continued after that moment. You have some rare situations like uh, Legend of Zelda, like um, uh, sorry, I, I I saw you saying my name there in the chat. Keep going it through me. Um, yes, yeah, I do keep all my uh, all my vods organized. Uh, like Legend of Zelda, following a link to the past, you have Oracle of Ages and Seasons, which takes place. Maybe a year, maybe a couple of years after A Link to the Past. And then you have Link's Awakening, which takes place immediately after Ages and Seasons. You know, in the original timeline. The current timeline, that's been changed. But I don't agree with that change, so as far as I'm concerned, that's all one series of events. Um, the only other example I can think of off the top of my head is Final Fantasy 7 because after Final Fantasy 7 you've got Advent Children and you've got there's just so much in the Final Fantasy 7 compilation that once the game is over the story hasn't really ended but I can't really think of many games that do a Okay, so this is what they're up to a year later. There's a lot of games that have sequels, and those sequels can be a direct continuation of the story, or they could be something that occurs a few years down the line, and a lot of the time it's with other characters as well. But uh, this is a unique, or very least a very rare situation, where we're coming back to these characters one year later, to see what happened after the world was remade. And that's really cool. That's really interesting. Um, I did make a little bit of a mistake in my last Xenoblade stream. I actually said that this was about Shulk and Fiora. It's not. It's about Shulk and Melia. So... The story revolves around Shulk and Melia looking for Alchemoth. Now, if you remember, Alchemoth was on the back of the Bionis. It floated above the Aerith Sea, which was suspended between the wings of Bionis. But when Bionis fell, when the world was remade, what happened to Alchemoth? 
Well, that's what this epilogue is uh, hoping to explain, confirm, take us on a new journey to discover the fate of the High End Deer. So I hope you'll come along with me on this journey and uh, we get the final say in the world of Xenoblade Chronicles. Before we do that though, before we jump on into the game, I of course want to welcome the chat, want to welcome Kiko, Tim, and everyone else who's out there. How are you doing, you guys? How are things today? Kiko, of course, is our moderator for this evening. Uh, Kiko says, Golden Sun did an interesting thing where its first sequel was, what are the other guys up to? And then the next sequel was uh, Next Generation Situation. Oh yeah, that's right. Because... The first Golden Sun kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So the way that goes is in... Go we'll play Golden Sun eventually, but... Um, without getting into spoiler territory, in Golden Sun... Uh, there are two groups of people that are basically working against one another. I wouldn't necessarily call them villains, but they do appear to be villainous throughout the story of the first game. But when Golden Sun comes to an end, it's not actually the ending of the game. It ends on a cliffhanger, and the... Um, the perspective changes to the other group in Golden Sun the Dark Age and that's where you see it from the other groups groups perspective and that's where you then go through to the the finale of the game the game actually then ends at the end of Golden Sun 2 the Dark Age so that's a really cool way of doing it I mean it came out on the Game Boy Advance, so there wasn't something... You know, like with PlayStation games, you could swap the discs. You couldn't really do that with Game Boy Advance games. So, to split it into basically two stories was a really good way of being able to... Show the story from a different... Sorry, showing the story from a different perspective was a good way of taking everything back to zero Without actually taking everything back to zero, you know It would be really annoying if you get halfway through the story and then you had to buy You know another cartridge you put that in and all your characters were back to level zero or level one That would be really annoying, but the way that they did it the whole perspective shift really does allow for uh, that sense that you you haven't lost progress you're just progressing with new characters now and that was I, I think that was really well done uh, I had a very interesting day in that I should have been dead on my feet but I got a little better Cough less and become more alert. Okay. Kept feeling like I didn't... Uh, I'd done it. Blech. Kept feeling like I'd done a lot. Then wondered what I'd achieved. Then, oh look at all this work I did. I... I get that. Because... I do all of my own graphic design. Right? As you probably well know. Kiko does the artwork for me. I do all the graphics and the overlays and stuff like that. And the thing with overlays I've discovered is that it doesn't feel like you've done anything. It's kind of rough, honestly. It's it's one of those things that you just kind of go, ah, you know what? I don't feel like I've achieved anything today. And uh, it can really suck, genuinely. It can really suck. And... And that's because even though you're working on a particular aspect, because it's the whole overlay as a whole, 
that feels complete. You know, it, it only feels complete when it's complete, right? So, if you're working on, say, like, the, the banners, where it says, like, chat feed and media player. Um... If you're working on a banner and you've, you've just, you've made one of these little banners, it genuinely does not feel like you've done much. And... And that could be like an hour of, of your time, you know? And so you spent an hour doing this thing and then you look at it and you've got all these little things that are started, but the, the whole is incomplete. And so it doesn't feel like you've gotten anywhere. And then a couple of days later, when you, you've actually finished the whole thing, it suddenly, you know, all of that work suddenly makes sense and you can see it all finished, complete and ready to go. And suddenly all that hard work makes sense because you've got something that you're happy with. But it definitely feels like that um, as you're building overlays. It just feels feels like you're not getting anything done. Regarding uh, Golden Sun, also the final act uses save data from the first game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. If you can transfer save data between um, games. But you can't do, like, um, a cartridge swap because the data doesn't stay in the RAM when you switch off a cartridge. And when you... Because it's... Because essentially what a cartridge is is a... Uh, a ROM stick. Essentially a cartridge... You know, like, you've got your RAM cards that you put into your PC? That's essentially what a... Um, or a cartridge is. It's just one of those. So you can't really pull a cartridge out and put another cartridge back in, in the same way that you could do it with a disc. Because the, the system is reliant on that cartridge being there to run properly. Once you take a cartridge out, you've got like two seconds to put it back in before the volatile memory expires. And this is one of the things, if you recall, you may be aware of the ice key in Banjo and Kazooie. Well, the ice key was supposed to have been an item that was going to be used in a feature called Quick Swap. But eventually, Nintendo was like, no, you don't want to be doing that. So, Ray abandoned the the idea entirely. But the quick swap was supposed to be that you pull the cartridge out and put another cartridge in. But because the time frame for doing that on the N64 was so narrow, you only had a few seconds that if you actually did that wrong, you could very easily damage your cartridges and the console itself. So it just wasn't worth it in the end. Sure, it's something you could, like in theory, it's something you could do, but it was not a good idea. It absolutely was not a good idea to do so. It generates a code. Yeah, that's that's how a lot of the sharing of saves uh, is done on cartridge stuff. Is that it shares a code, and uh, like I think a lot of people probably are aware of things like the uh, like Super Metroid gives you a code, or Mega Man gives you a code for you to save your place, and really all that code is is information about how many lives you have, how many stages you've completed, what weapons you've got, uh, what extra upgrades you've got, things like that. So it doesn't necessarily save it perfectly. Like some of the stuff, like when you think about Metroid, like when you uh, save your game, 
it will re uh, like refill your HP as well when you save the game. So that's a piece of data that it doesn't require uh, to be saved. It's not necessary to save your HP because it automatically heals you at the same time. That's a that is something that can be done to make save data smaller. You know. So what it'll end up doing is it'll count the number of... Actually, I think your bombs and everything get regened as well when you save. I think it does. I think it like fully restocks and, and heals you when you go to a save room. So, you know, it doesn't need to keep track of all that. What it does need to keep track of is the maximum number of missiles you have. The maximum number of super missiles you have. Do you have the morph ball? Do you have the ice beam? Do you have, you know, all of these things? And how far along are you? Which save rooms have you unlocked? And I think everyone knows the, uh, uh the Justin Bailey glitch. Where, well, it's not really a glitch, it's a password. Uh, where you put into um, Super Metroid the name Justin Bailey. And the thing is, Justin Bailey is absolutely just a coincidence. Justin Bailey is, isn't anyone in particular. It isn't someone in the development team. It isn't someone in the localization team. It isn't someone that someone knew. It's just a coincidence. There's also another one which references Dragon Ball Z. But uh, I can't remember what that code actually is. But yeah, there's a number of codes that because it is... Um, because the, the way that the save data is stored is with these randomized letters and numbers. Or sometimes you can just enter a sentence or a word into the password screen and it'll work. Because the game will look at that and go, okay, so this is this piece of save data, this piece of save data, this piece of save data. And if it doesn't work, it'll tell you that that's, that, that doesn't work, you know? That's, that's not... Um, Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a valid password. But in other times, you can, like I said, you could just put a sentence in and it might just work. And that's how the Justin Bailey code, that's how they theorized that the Justin Bailey code was discovered. It was, it's assumed that someone named Justin Bailey just put their name in to see what would happen. And we ended up with a 100% complete Metroid file. All weapons and uh, swimsuit, oh, zero suit Samus. That's pretty bloody lucky. <laughs> to think that could be, it could have been lost, you know? If someone named Justin Bailey hadn't just fiddled with the, uh, with the save system and put their name into it, we never would have known. That's kind of funny to think that uh, such a powerful code was out there, and if it wasn't for one guy, we might never have found it. That's, that's kind of, I find that funny. I find that really funny. Like the confluence of events that had to occur for that such a powerful password to be found. I guess that ties straight back into Xenoblade Chronicles. Because it seems that Justin Bailey chose his own fate. Just like Shulk. Just like Fiora. Shala, Ryan, Dunban, even Ricky.
And with that, I'm going to drop us over into the gaming screen. And we can play some Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. And I hope that you continue to enjoy this journey. Like I said, if you haven't seen the previous Xenoblade Chronicles uh, streams, they are all available for you to find in the playlist on the YouTube channel. And I think Future Connected will probably go into the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition playlist as well. So I might do it as its own playlist, but it, it will definitely go into uh, Definitive Edition as well. Makes it easier for people to find, you know? All right. And with that one, let's jump on into the game. And like, this isn't just DLC. This isn't just an, an additional chapter for the game. This is basically its own game on the same cartridge. Like when you click the extra story, it takes you to this whole new starting screen and everything. All right, I wanna double check the options because subtitles were turned off. There we go. Okay. And let's jump on in. I found a little thing on the back of my leg. It looks like a little spot or something. I'm picking at it and I really shouldn't be. Why am I telling you? That symbol. Today, we use our power to fell a god. And then... Seize our destiny! All that I am is fading. The memory of a god's existence, born from the chaos of creation. It is vanishing. Yeah, so, like, that's kind of what I was talking about, about how what were you looking at? the universe has to change. Because if the world was created by that god, and that god, he doesn't die, it just ceases to exist. Ceases to have ever existed. The world has to change. I like Shulk's new look. There it is. Melia, we're in sight of Alchemoth. All right, I'm on my way. More ships like junks? I don't know if it's more ships like junks or if it is junks. It could be junks. We'll find out now. This is a part of Bionis that we've never been to before. Yeah, it looks like he's made, like, um...
It looks like he's made a new Monado. Or, well, I guess it's not really, now that we know what the Monado is, I guess it's not really a Monado. But he's made a sword that looks like his old Monado. And there's Alchemoth. so quickly that I didn't get a good look myself. I saw some flickering around the capital. Then suddenly, a black beam. A black beam? Some new defensive measure, perhaps. The junks. Oh, it is junks. Some components sustained heavy damage. It won't budge until we can swap them out. Right. It's fine. They're not particularly rare parts. Chuck all that power creation you couldn't make more land. You I think there is more land. Simple. Remember, we are still very much in the dark here. Good thing I came prepared. We'll probably be needing this. Do you know what? That looks very similar to uh, a weapon that I came up with called the Steam Sword. Gameplay differences, here we go. Some of the elements of this new adventure are very different from the adventure so far. The most major points will be introduced in the following pages. Um, party gauge. As you progress through your adventure, instead of chain attacks, you will unlock an all new system for performing all out attacks. You're still required a segment of the gauge to revive fallen allies. In the new adventure, Shulk has lost his power to see visions. This calls for more caution than before when it comes to your enemy's most powerful attacks. Some allies will battle in ways not present before. The skill tree system has been removed. There are further changes, so keep an eye out for them as you play. So this thing is like really big. Like in, in terms of changes, like, some major changes have occurred between uh, the end of the last game and this one. All because, and it's all story related as well, all because Shulk has remade reality. He doesn't have the visions anymore because he chose a world where you couldn't see fate. Where fate didn't exist and it was all up to individual choices. It also looks like I'm playing as Melia. Okay, let's go and help these little no pawns. Oh, I see. Her arts. Ooh, I wonder if I can change her arts. Hang on. Let me just quickly check what arts she has available. Cool. Okay, so I can set up uh, these arts as I prefer um first end oh no didn't mean to do that there we go um let's see 
What was the other one I used to have? Power effect? No. Oh yeah, spear break, that's right. There we go. Spear break and starlight kick. But I'm gonna have to keep her heal, I think. I'm gonna have to keep her heal, seeing as I don't have a healer now. And I don't have enough points to level anything just yet. Okay, let's have a look at Shulk. Uh, he doesn't have any new abilities. Does... Oh, he does still have his Monado abilities, though. That's surprising. Okay. That's not so bad. I guess uh, remaking reality is a good new game excuse uh, to reset characters who have grown stronger and more skilled over an event. Well, they haven't really done that. Like, if you look... Okay, it's a little bit, uh, they're a little bit weaker. They're level 60, but that's not far off where I was. By the end of the game, I think I was like level 79. Okay, so let, let's, um... Let's take on a Lightning Skeeter just to get back into it. So that, uh, that little gift of healing I did there wasn't, uh, didn't do a huge amount of healing, to be honest. Ooh. Okay, so I definitely need to be more attentive when it comes to healing. I definitely want to be healing myself a little bit more and doing that healing gift for Shulk. Who next in line to get face full of mild down? <laughs> Anyone so much as breathe this way? My full of Kino go blah 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 blah. Fair enough. Kino, Nene, are you hurt? Mama. Let us help too. Miss Melia, Mr. Shulk. Does this mean we have four party members? Oh, not three. Okay. <clears throat> uh, main menu. I want to see what their abilities are first. Well. Right. There's our Shala. <laughs> Healy Bullet. Healy Kaboom. Healy round around, cure thing of me. <laughs> cure de pure round, shield cat clang, Healy counter, toasty hot bullet. Oh my goodness! All right, so yeah, we're gonna be sticking. We're gonna keep uh, this dude in. A noggin shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's set up this uh, this nopon. Uh, Healy bullet, Healy kaboom, Healy round, cure thingamy. Actually, I prefer the uh, cure de pure round um, shield. These are all good so far. I prefer toasty bullet. Um, ba 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 boost. There we go. Wait, what did I have instead of Noggin Shot? Was it the shield? Oh no, it was the cure, wasn't it? Um. Uh, 
I might get rid of the healing. Ooh. I'll get rid of that one. Okay. Just trying to remember how I had it set up. I think that that looks about right. And they don't have any XP. Okay. Oh, do we have different equipment? She has a staff called the World Ender. She'd know a thing or two about that. Monado Replica EX. So there it is. That's the Monado Replica. Yeah, basically just looks and works like the Monado. So I don't think I have any... No, I don't have any gems yet, so I can't do anything about that. So... What is this? Who is she supposed to be? I need to see her arts. Oh, she's Ryan! Okay, interesting. All right, so this this one is Sharla and this one is Ryan. Okay, Kino is Sharla and Nene is Ryan. Mild down, of course. Oh, mild down. <laughs> Okay, um, I j that does remind me though, I'm definitely going to have to do a different build here because we don't have anyone that can topple. Or well, we do, but, um... What's this one? Seal enemy arts. Okay, we'll swap that one for Starlight Kick. And then I'll put this over this side. Like that. Cool. Alright. That works for me. No, I can't use... I'm supposed to use that after I use the, uh, spear break. There we go. Big sis, we did it! Job is good one, Kino. That was amazing, you two. It was like seeing Ryan and Sharla fighting together again. There it is. That's so. Fitting. The children of here upon Ricky's household. Those are his kids? Kino. Hmm? Nene, very, very sorry. Kino, not so good with strangers. Oh, really? Most interesting. Please do not take personally. If we stay here, there is a risk of another attack. We should move to a safer location. Very well. Is this acceptable? Plenty acceptable. Right. Let's go. Okay, so where are we going? Like... Where are we? That's the... That's a big question. We're clearly still on a piece of Bionis. This place looks promising. We can take a break here. What, like 
10 yards from where we were. <laughs> we, we literally just moved 10 yards and suddenly it's safe so now. What? What were you two doing out there? <laughs> Rather, how did you even get here at all? Uh, about that. Melia, I think these two must have come on the junks. What? <laughs> what? Are you quite sure, Shulk? When you consider their relative positions, I think it's quite credible. The capital on the Bionis shoulder. <laughs> so... Ah, so that is where the junks comes in then. I appreciate it. But even though we won peace with Zanz's defeat, the rebuilding continues. Much remains to be done. I realize that. And I also know that you've been putting in every effort. So why then? If the capital is on the shoulder, there are people there. I thought you'd want to go. Shulk, that's... We could be there and back in less than half a day. Mama? Oh no. Oh. Oh no. Little pawns want adventure. Kino, maybe better to explain. Mm. We just on little strolly stroll when we suddenly hear voices. Now, now, Kino. Nene watched Kino with eyes of Rogel. <laughs> Kino, follow Mr. Shulk from behind and do some sneak peekings. <laughs> Mama, sister Pong followed Kino and sneak peek on too. Me, me, me. Hmm. So you stowed away like I thought. But what for? <laughs> Kino always look up to Dead upon. Want to become mighty here upon too. I'm certain Ricky would be most proud. But how did that lead to you boarding our vessel? He see opportunity to help people who are in trouble. That way, can become friends with people everywhere. Mighty Hiropon make friends with every toe step. Or so Dedapon say, at least. I see. That does explain things. Many, many sorries. Is, is not fault of sister Pon? He's not scored nay nay. Fault is of Kino only. Kino. Sincere sorries. Aww. Kino wanted to repay that. That upon a mama upon take Kino in when Kino all alone. Oh. You are alone. Is true. One day, out of blue, Dad upon bring Kino home. Said, here is brother upon. Oh. Nobody make comment. Everyone except Kino. Kino, what happy they could say. Oh, he's an orphan. That why. Now they want to become hero upon and repay that to family. Kino, really sorry. Oh. Kino, you do your family honor. Yours is a most noble sentiment. I am utterly certain that Ricky and Oka are proud of you too. Hmm. Actually, Melia and I are in a bit of trouble right now. We could use the help. For really? Uh huh. For really? <laughs> oh, Fino must. Yeah. <laughs> really twist wing, but fine. Will allow to be sidekicks of Kino. Yeah. 
<laughs> Just like his dad upon calling everyone sidekicks. <laughs> so, we'll be heading for the capital to find parts for the junks. Yes, about that. Hmm? It's a bit of a hike, but could we check out that cape? Oh. There's something over there, like a building. Explain. I'm a bit concerned. What you said about defensive measures. You fear we may come under fire again. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be uh, a bit concerned too, honestly. It's true. Caution frequently pays off in the long run. <laughs> Explain. I'm sorry, Melia. The legend of Her Heroponkino. <laughs> uh, the event theater has been added. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what that does. Yep. Okay. So, we just make our way across. I'm... The thing that I'm very interested about is the fact that this place is still... Oh, whoa! I guess they have to go somewhere. <clears throat> Ooh! I am not doing a huge amount of damage to this thing. Uh, I'll use that to get a heal off. Kino. That was a bit bigger than an Ansel. Yeah, it's one of those big pterodactyl things. Yeah, there's more An Ansels over there as well. Okay. I would have thought that, um... Oh no, there's a... There's a bug coming in as well. Immune. Okay, I can't knock it down, unfortunately. Oh no. Yeah, I thought being um a bird, lightning damage would probably oh Shulk is dying. Oh, we caught the attention of a nebula. Okay. Uh, we don't have chain attacks. Oh, right. We don't... Oh, we don't have chain attacks. Oh. Uh. Okay. Uh, what am I? Oh, 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 heal, 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 heal. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, this is actually really tough. This is so different. Oh no, oh no. It, it doesn't look all that different, but it really is. <clears throat> oh, we got put all the way back on the junks? Oh, good grief. The enemies up here are really strong. And, um... The gameplay just feels very different. I don't want to swap Melia out, though, you know? I think I want to keep Melia in as the main character. It's clearly how this game is intending it to be. But there's so many enemies over here, and they're all pretty high level. attack Monado Eater? Was, did I did I mistake that? Did you just say Monado Eater? Or was that Eater just with a strange accent? Oof. Interesting. I'm definitely learning about um, the different characters' playstyles. the The inability to do a, a chain attack is surprisingly uh, limiting. Crap, the Ancels appeared as well. Okay. Oh my god, I've got... Oh my goodness. just doesn't do enough healing, honestly. Shulk alive is so hard. There he goes. I kind of want, um, I kind of want Kino to focus on keeping Shulk alive rather than worrying about Melia because Melia, I can, I can keep Melia alive just fine. Now you 
Okay. Oh, the, the nebula's gotten involved again. Oh my goodness. No, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. Kino, feel free to heal me, please. Good grief. There it goes. Oof. Okay. Yeah, I think this this definitely feels a lot more difficult than the previous, you know, than than um than the main game. Maybe it's because of the build. Maybe the character's stats are different. Maybe it's because I don't have particularly good armor at the moment. Like, that's another thing. I, I, I've only got basic armor. I don't have gems. Wait, does this have a collectopedia? It does. Okay. Uh, Grizella Lion, welcome to uh, the stream. How are you doing today? You need a special tool to mine here. Oh. Interesting. That's different. Wait, Grizzly Grizzly -o Lion. Sorry. <laughs> you doing great? That's awesome. Welcome to the stream. How, um Have you played uh, Xenoblade Chronicles before? Only high end here living here. Oh there. Strangers. Ah, oh, hello. Oh, you haven't played before? So this is like, uh, what we're playing right now is the epilogue. You've had a rough time of it. However, I suggest you steer clear of Alkamoth. Even if you do somehow get there in one piece, don't expect the transporters to be running. Oh? Why's that? The thing that shot at you was no defense platform. It was a monster we've taken to calling the Fog King. Oh. The Fog King? Yeah. Suddenly showed up in Well, that's a Fog King problem, back. isn't it? From what I gather, you're from the Imperial Guard. Are the swords you carry just for show? <laughs> Taking a sword to it is folly. It laughs at our attack. Wow! It's like hacking at smoke. Throwing shade. Blows pass clean through it. Must be ghost. Ghost not shoot beams, dum dum. <laughs> so that's why you call it the Fog King. 
We fought in defense of our home. We were ready to die, and many of us did. But in the end, it won us nothing at all. The Fish. Fox King's attacks tore into us hard. Yeah, they those Fox King attacks. the Hyentia and anyone else we found, and gave up the capital, so that we might live. How awful. Yes, My fucking terrible. Heart belongs there. Our heartland, our capital. Yet I cannot even mourn it. <sighs> Maxis. Huh? Yes. Please, you have to tell us how to get inside. Oh yeah, yeah. Every everyone died when we tried to uh, to get in. Everyone died. Hmm. Sounds like a challenge. Then you should know better. No matter the situation, we have to go. If I fix the junks, we can all leave this place. Then, once we're in Colony Nine, we can make plans to retake Alchemoth. No point. Why not? Shulk. Do you think we took all that lying down? Huh? We're not stupid, you know. We did all we could. It's true. I want to go home. But that's a dream that won't come to pass, and it already cost too many lives. <sighs> Maxis. I understand where you're coming from. Still, I have to be blunt with you. Let it go. I actually kind of like this conversation. Like, I'm glad that, um... In so many other RPGs, you get a situation where an entire no, army has been laid to waste and the hero comes along and is like, Don't worry, I'll do it single-handedly. So this means we're stuck here? Quite a predicament. And in this, they just basically turned around and went, Do you really think that you can do it on your own? Are you? How do you know my name? I humbly beg your pardon. Gelgar, at your majesty's service. Formerly of the personal protection division of the Alchemoth Guard Regiment. Well, he's a if villain. So, <laughs> then the pardon is mine to beg, Sir Gelgar. And please, dispense with the majesty. Perish the thought, your majesty. The recent war has rid us of the wicked pure bloods. Oh dear. See what I say? What did I say? Are chosen for its caretakers. With you, Lady Melia, as our shining paragon, I cannot but address you as Majesty. Hm. I have no patience for wheedling. Especially from knaves who spit on their ancestors. Amen. I would never dream of doing such. I merely spoke plain truth, no more. <laughs> As you wish. <sighs> but the majesty address is burdensome to me. If you absolutely insist. We absolutely do. Address, Lady Melia will have to suffice. So kind, Sir Gelgar. Make no mention of it, Lady Melia. Sir Gelgar, we really need to get to Alchemoth, no matter what. Ah, yes. I have heard your exchange with Maxis. Hindering the Empress's triumph. A narrow-minded fool, if ever there was one. <laughs> I, I already really don't like this guy. To begin the authentication process, one must raise their hand to the transporter. The device is configured in such a way that only some of the Hyentia in this land... He's first-class slime? Yeah, you damn right he is. Hence, Lady Melia should not have the slightest issue activating it. A similar mechanism to the tombs, then. That's our ticket into Alchemoth. Yes. Tasty news! Friend Gelgar is good friend! No, friend Gelgar is bad friend. Not at all. I am but a humble servant in Lady Melia's employ. 
If it not displeased my ladyship too grossly, may I offer you my companionship on your journey? I have a modicum of skill with the blade. Please rest assured. I appreciate the offer, but must refuse. We do not lack for strength. Indeed. A great shame. Should the need arise, I shall remain ready to serve. Certainly. By the way, Sir Galgar, this outpost appears to consist of naught but soldiers. Where might all the other refugees reside? They dwell beyond the Grandel Ramparts, which lie below this point. They live at a remove from you, then? Yes, because of the machina who live there. What do you mean? Oh my goodness, are you really that I racist? When the war broke out, it was the Machina's treachery that lit the fuse. No, it wasn't. We needn't have lost our brethren and our home. Oh my goodness. You that... stand the Machina <clears throat> and thus moved away. Precisely. But the war is concluded, Sir Gelgar. Some and that's not even what happened. <sighs> Melia, shall we go see for ourselves? Ah, yes. Very well. The so Machina were on our side. We'll take our leave of you now. Do please take care of yourselves. You'll find passage to the capital through the Cragmore Caverns. How quickly history was rewritten. So Gelgar, thanks for this. See you friend later. Please to be extra careful of self. The same to you all. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. You can buy weapons and armor in shops to help your journey go smoother. Thank goodness for that. In this chapter of the adventure, you will not find armor among the spoils of defeating monsters. But you may find weapons that differ from what shops have on offer. Okay. So there are no... Armor drops. Interesting. There's no lack of people having problems on the Bionis shoulder. Through completing the quest they give you... You'll obtain rewards such as money and equipment in new color variations suitable for use as cosmetics. Okay, I'm not too worried about that. Okay. Yes. Hamelin, I know it's no business of mine to be asking outsiders, but would you consider assisting us with a hunt? Some of our people sustained injuries while on the last one leaving us somewhat short-staffed. Tell me in greater detail. Kino waiting to ask too. Go down from here in the direction of the lake and you will arrive at Navia Highland. There you should find some Machna X. We were able to lure them out with bait not too long ago. Would it trouble you to defeat them and collect some X Iron Hearts for us? Once you have finished, be sure to lay some bait to the west of Navia Highland. They won't congregate if we don't coax them out, and our hunters could do with the assistance. X are quite partial to rainbow carrots. It would spare us a great deal of effort if you were to find some for us. Okay, so we need to get the... hearts? I hope it's not too much trouble to ask all this of you, but... We'd greatly appreciate it if you could find the time. Rest assured, your issue will be attended to with haste. Okay, so rather than giving us one... If you remember, in Xenoblade Chronicles, we would do one quest, and then we'd come back, and then they give us another one, and then they give us another one, and then they give us another one. They basically just gave us the entire quest line. But we got... Complete it in stages. That's pretty different. That's actually that's really good hey. It uh, removes the busy work of just traveling back and forth 
Hello there. Would you... How would you feel about assisting me in my research? Come now, don't make those faces. It's an easy task, I swear. I'll take the grimace as a happily ma'am, shall I? See, I've developed this tool for exploiting ether deposits. A common ether pick, if you will. And I'd like you to test it out. Hmm? You're still looking uncertain. Struck dumb by my apparent genius? Oh, of course. You're used to being able to mine ether deposits on the Bionis with run-of-the-mill tools, aren't you? Well, that won't work here on the Bionis shoulder. The deposits are too dense, so you'll need a specialized implement. I.e. this. Previous iterations of the ether pick were pretty heavy machinery, though, requiring training and a license to operate. So to cut through the rigmarole, I looked into developing one that even lay people like you could use right uh, from the right off. If you prove me right, I'll even let you keep it once you're done. How about it? They think they're being polite. Yeah, right. Oh, you you'll do it? Well, that's just grand. See. I made the thing, so it would mean any it wouldn't mean anything if I, only I tested it myself. Thanks. I used to have an assistant helping me, but they seemed dissatisfied for some reason and run off before I knew it. I'm a little concerned about that. I'm a little bit concerned. Just mosey on up to an ether deposit. Heft the common ether pick and use it to give the deposit a good whack. Do let me know how you get on. Rest assured that your issue will be attended to with haste. Okay, so now I can do this. Hmm. If I recall Caronel's words, I should locate the ether deposit, then give it a good whack. No time like the present, I suppose. I look forward to this experience. Melia, we've been doing this for ages. <clears throat> Well, that didn't sound too good. Broken ether pit. What? What just happened? Caronel? Hey. Thank you for that. I have to say, I didn't expect it to break so easily. Though. <sighs> right. Give it here for a minute. I see, I see. So the problem is durability. Alright. Due to the higher ether density on Bionic's shoulder, it seems it crystallizes into a form that is perfect for gems. Just reinforcing the pick isn't likely to improve the yield in practice. Thank you all, this has been a valuable learning opportunity. I feel like I can take my research to the next level now. I did want you to have the common ether pick as a thanks, but now that it's broken, it won't really do, will it? Well, that's too bad. I'll just have to give you the old retail model instead. Like I said, it's got kinks, so it requires a trained hand. But it's better than nothing, right? You should be able to use it to harvest decently high purity gems from all around the shoulder. Saves you time crafting. Oh, oh I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it, okay. Okay, so I, instead of using uh, the the ether deposits to get crystals to then refine into gems, I get gems directly from the deposits. Okay. On Bionis' shoulder, you can use a tool called an ether pick to mine actual gems from deposits, not just crystals. If you exhaust a given deposit, check back after a while. As you progress through the story, you may be able to obtain a more efficient ether pick. With a better ether pick, you could mine gems of higher rank. Okay, that makes sense. Poison Defense 2. And Poison Defense 3. Not the best, but it'll do. Oh, I can't actually equip it.
it's yeah, it's it's a it's a little bit more convenient. It does mean that you don't have to do the refining. But it does mean that you're basically left with what you've got. With crystals, you could use them to refine a specific gem. With these, it's just purely random. Hey. Have you come here across Navia Highland? Then you must have met those ether-based organisms along the way. I speak of the common monsters that compose entirely of ether. I think she's talking about the nebula. These ether organisms have appeared all across Navia Highland recently, and in large numbers too. There must be at least two points they're spawning from, as their exact properties differ based on location. Anyway, I'm concerned. When these organisms gather, they create strong ether field that attracts other monsters. If you haven't seen them spawn yourself, it's possible there are some prerequisite to it having happening that we're not aware of. If you notice a flock of these organisms in your travels, I'd like to ask you to eliminate them with all haste. Exterminate the wind elementals and the water elementals. Well, we did fight one wind nebula. They're a little bit stronger than I was expecting, but uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Actually, it's my little brother who told me about this. He vowed to take matters into his own hands if the situation did not prove improve on its own. But as his sister, I prefer that he did not put himself in harm's way. I'm sorry to trouble you all, but I hope you understand. This is for the common good. Fortune be with you. Rest assured your issue will be attended to with haste. I swear there was another volume. Where in the world could it have gone? Another volume? Like another box? Ooh, shop. Hi there. Okay, what have you got? So... That's okay. Crit I don't like the, the minus 10 crit rate, but that looks... Useful. Ooh, 16,000? Oh, I've only got 30,000. Right, okay. Um... Oof. Okay. Uh, right. So, basically, I want to get some kind of... I need an armor with a slot. Gauntlets? Gauntlets might be good. I can give one to... One to Shulk, one to Melia. That's a good start. Uh, Stella Gauntlet. Wait. Rex Jacket? Rex Bottoms and... Rex is the name of the main character from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I just realized it's the Monado Rex. Monado, Monado Repl Replica EX. Interesting. Okay, so I got a Poison Defense 2 and a Poison Defense 3. I'll give... Melia, the Poison Defense 3, and Shulk, the Defense 2. Is it a coincidence? When was this adventure made? Uh, this was made after Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So, the order of release was Xenoblade Chronicles, for Wii, obviously, 
uh, Xenoblade Chronicles then for 3DS, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on Switch, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition on Switch, and then Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Okay. So we got a little bit of extra defense now. We might be able to take on some of those enemies. Um, and we can probably do a couple of those side quests for a little bit of cash. Ooh, Rainbow Carrot. So, hang on a minute. I'm I'm collecting items. I just realized. Hang on a minute. Element element fragment. You know, unlike the previous, you know, the rest of the game, I may want to sell pretty much everything. Because I'm going to need the cash. I definitely need the cash. Right, so what, did it, what was the actual quest that they gave me? How, hold on. Uh, this one is exterminate the wind elementals and exterminate water elementals. I need to do three of each. And this one is 4x iron hearts. Okay. Oh, hello. Oh, hang on. There's a quest item here. Pororo's favorite. Okay. I don't think we've encountered Pororo yet. I'm assuming that Pororo is a uh, another Nopon with a name like that. Out. Let's drag this thing. I don't. Oh, that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. Okay, oh, my goodness, I was stuck. Stop it, stop it. Right. Wait, what? So, that nebula just decided, nah, do you know what, I don't feel like fighting you anymore. Come here. I don't know what... I don't know if there is, like, elemental defense and, um, resistances 
and you know weaknesses and resist there weaknesses and resistance oh my goodness can I speak today please I don't know if that's necessarily a thing in this game um I'm not really seeing much of a difference between using wi uh, fire or lightning on this nebula or water for that matter Oh, they do that thing where they explode. That's annoying. That's really annoying. And I don't have, um... I can't do chain attacks, so I can't stop them from exploding. Okay, where's that Ansel going? This way? Okay, we'll grab him on his way through. Oh, he changed direction. Damn it! Uh, duh, 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 duh. I don't particularly want to go through that way. That is a really dangerous route to take. All of these are really dangerous routes to take with that Ansel flying overhead. And that thing. Oh, that's a Machna X. Is that the one we're looking for? I think those are the ones we're looking for. No, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's the right ones. Okay. Just need to be cautious. I don't, again, I don't want to get the attention of too many of them at the same time. Oh my goodness, Shulk? Okay, um, maybe, maybe, I don't want to knock this thing down because it seems that the... Actually, do you know what? Let me switch Shulk in as my main party member. I'll be able to control it a little bit better now. Uh, are you Shadow Eye? Look away. <laughs> So it's just going to ignore the fact that I use Shadow Eye. Alright, fair enough. Me? Alright. That's a little bit easier, actually. If I'm controlling Shulk, it's a little bit easier. Hey, Drenik, welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? So it, it seems that um, Shadow Eye does even less than it did in the main game. They just completely ignore it. Just 
Leg Arden. Okay, it's a level 63 Leg Arden, but still. I don't think they, they should be that difficult. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> Amazing. And I was starting to believe that uh, Shadow Eye was actually kind of useful at the end of the, the main game, but now they're just completely ignoring it. That's hilarious. Hey, fancy healing me? No? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a heart. Where's the hearts? Don't really want to fight the Ardens. Uh, ooh, 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 hello. Oh, that's, that's the elemental. Okay. Could you come back? <laughs> Do you mind I am trying to fight you? Ooh. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. Ah, I missed it. I missed my opportunity. Don't wanna, yeah, exactly. I'm kind of feeling that from a lot of the monsters at the moment. It's just like, I'm gonna use Shadow Eye, and the monsters are like, nah. -uh. Oh, that's another one exploded. Uh, I'm not seeing any more X though. Phlegmatic Jameer. Phlegmatic? The heck does that mean? But he does look like he's preaching to the other ones. That's, uh, yeah, okay. Phlegmatic? Is that even a word? Oh, there's the giant cat piles. Now let's uh, let's have a look at the collectibles because we might actually still gain gems from this Valak corsage. Oh, okay, so not gems. Actually, no, thinking about it, we got armor from the Collectopedia previously as well. So let's take a little look. Oh, that's from Melia specifically. Still have no gems. So there's a water one right there. Oh, 
Watch out. Watch out. Pull it back. Straight into the water where we can't reach it. Amazing. How about... Melia? Melia? This way? Me Alright, fine. Do you know what? Get exploded then. <laughs> See if I care. Oh, there's a brog over there too. Oh, there's a few brogs. Okay. Yeah, it, I just kind of wish that they wouldn't. It would be very useful if the game would actually, you know, listen to me occasionally. It's actually rather annoying. What is this? What is this? Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Let's see then. Um, oh, pff, botched that up, didn't I? Oh my goodness, yeah, Shadow Eye is completely worthless in this. What have they done to it? Cragmore Caverns? Oh, hello. Before friends pass here, please to hear story. I sense an ordeal in our immediate future. Hm. Gratitude for stopping in tracks. What is matter? Matter is a bit complicated, to be frank. If we can help, we would like to do so. Meme. Although we've pretty much only just arrived here, so if it's directions you need, we might not be the ones to ask. Issue is not about where it go. Actually, it's about tracking down friends. They get lost? They not lost, no. They scatter to designate locations to perform ordered land survey. What point of that? Measuring relative and absolute elevation of terrain, plot distance, and other such. Oh no, completely forgot to do mandatory self-intro. Qualified, certified, satisfaction, guaranteed, guaranteed, guarant, guaranteed, prospector, tend to. His name? Surveying new land is game. Pleasure to meet you, tend to. I'm Shulk, and these are Melia, Nene, and Kino. Pleasure all belong to Tentu. My curiosity is a little piqued. Might I ask what a Pond Spectre is? Question is extremely well-timed. 
Pond Spectre is name of elite unit of no pond surveyors, and tent who is one. No pond from Frontier Village surely hear Pond Spectre name said in tone of reverence at least once or twice. Um Sister Pond, you have any clue? Nay nay guess Dad Pond might know. Uh things worse than tend to thought. Long period of suspended activity was disastrous for brand recognition. Meh! No, no. Tribulation is only opportunity in full body costume. What? Tribulation. Oh. Difficulty is only an opportunity in disguise. Right, okay, carry on. Go on. Tend to have to put best foot forward. Tend to another prospect, uh, pond specters. Oh, good grief. I'm not going to be able to get through this, am I? Actually comes to Bionic Shoulder to conduct full and complete survey. But Chief 1-1, one, one, who... 1-1? One, one? Wait, he's 10-2. Chief is 1-1. One, one. Who else are we expecting to encounter along the way? 5-6? Six? 6-9? Six, anyway. Forget to inform of rend rendezvous point. So though tend to finish own assignment, look like up creek without paddle. <laughs> Expect all pond specters in same boat. Tend to think should probably look for teammates, but uh, with monsters carpeting land, probably even veteran pond specter like tend to have hard time. Apart from yourself, how many members does your team number? Nice round 11. 11? I see. Wait, and the bot- the leader is 1-1. One, one. And there's 11 of them. Okay. Righto. I see. This is a vast land, so I'm searching- so searching by yourself certainly seems dangerous. Do you know where your colleagues might have gone? Um tend to have couple thinklings. Two pond specters can probably find. Then maybe they have clues for other whereabouts. Alright then, we search for first two. Now wait a single minute, Kino. Still plenty important business we attending to. Tend to not get underfoot, promise. Friends look strong, so thought maybe can go with. That way, if see pond specters somewhere along travel path, can help each other out. Is good plan or what? What do you think, Melia? Do you really need to ask, Shulk? We help you look for Pond Spectre friends. Should really be Miss Melia that say that. Really? Oh boy! Tear ducts of ten to welling with joy. Thank you, friends. Can you tell us, to the best of your knowledge, where you would expect your colleagues to be? Waddle, waddle, waddle. One was in charge of area between crossroads on way to Companion Cape, all the way to Nerthus Necropolis. That sounds like a horrible place to live, alright. That one is a bit of coward, so tend to not sure he do survey job properly. Other one was assigned to area past Cragmore Caverns, stretching from lake on lefty side to Pillar Knoll. Maybe having case of screamy abdabs <laughs> at unexpected circumstance. So Ten Two would like to put mind at ease. At least friends think Ten Two is some kind of free. At uh, least, uh, and lest friends think Ten Two is some kind of freeloader. Let reassure. When push come to shove, Ten Two shove. I feel better already. Thank you, Ten Two. But of course, ten two most grateful too. <laughs> this is great. This is this is difficult to read. Okay, blue team ten two. Gotcha. A 
Pros Pond Spectre enabled special attacks. The Pond Spectres are an elite band of surveyors from Frontier Village, split between red, blue, and yellow teams. If you can befriend members from all three teams, Shulk and his friends will gain access to new kind of special attack. So try to seek them out whenever possible. The full Pond Spectre Brigade numbers 12 members. Oh, I thought he said 11. Actually, he said a nice round 11, so I don't even know what that means. When you recruit one, they may tip you off to the location of others. Locations you heard of are marked on a map with a flag. Pond Spectres on the Bionic Shoulder have issues they struggle with. Resolve those issues for them to gain their help on your quest. Okay. In the collectible section of the main menu, you can access the Pond Spectre report. To learn more about Pond Spectres, you have to befriend up until that point. Sorry, what? In the collector's... The collectible section of the main menu, you can access the Pond Spectre report. To learn more about the Pond Spectres, you have to be f or you have to be friend up until that point. That feels like a run-on sentence. I feel like there should be a comma or something in there. I don't know. Anyway. Alright. Um. So the Pond Spectres are going to be following me by the looks of it. Let's have a look. So there should be another Pond Spectre up here. I think. Yeah. Oh, that's what the quest... Oh, remember I found that quest item. That's probably what it's for. Right. Tay Tay. What, what, what's Tay Tay do this time? Well, that's a voice. Qualified, certified, only mildly terrified. Pond Spectre Tay Tay is a uh, name, and surveying new lands is game. But really, none of that matter right now. Tay Tay is smack in the middle of cataclysmic struggle of life and death. That doesn't sound too good. Tete was sneak secret surveying, careful to hide from watchful monster eyes, but then made worse mistake of life. At end of pond inspection, let little victory cheer slip out, and then monster spotted Tete, also poised to lunge for soft succulent body of Tete. Thanks to quick escape legs, Tete able to hoof it all the way here, but then grim realization draw on, dawn on Tete. Somehow, Tay Tay lose more precious than life protective charm. Tay Tay think possible could have dropped the at near this neco necropolis, just up slope here. Oh, please help Tay Tay find dear friends. Tay Tay is begging you. What does he want? Tay Tay's charm? Okay, so that's not the thing that I found. What did I find? Key item. Key item. Pororo's favorite. Okay. Uh, area map. Okay, so there's no other pond specters available here right now. I just, I just noticed this. There's a little icon on the map. I think that's a heart to heart icon. Hmm. I should probably check those out. Okay, so the X, the Machna X has respawned. So, uh, we... Okay. Oi, right, whoa, whoa, whoa. In battle against enemies, Pond Spectres will jump in to help Shulk and his friends 
on their own initiative. Each pawn specter has a signature move, healing the party, debuffing the enemies, and so on. Red team have offensive signature moves. Blue team mostly have healing signature moves, but not all of them. Yellow team have debuffing signature moves. Did you see the, the yellow one is unconscious? Okay. If you perform well in battle start affinity, burst affinity, etc. by pressing B at the right time, the pawn specters may enter a state of high tension. Pawn specters in a state of high tension will join the battle with all of their strength and with no slacking off. High tension will wear off with time, returning to the usual state. Okay. Okay, so this explains why all of the enemies feel a lot stronger. Oh. It's because it's been rebalanced for these pawn specters. Okay, I've got the Iron Heart. Cool. I can take that back to the... to the village. Oh, they... Wait, they wanted me to put... Hang on. Uh, gather three rainbow carrots, head north to western Navia Highland and place the rainbow carrots to lure out Machina X. Okay, so I've got to do that part of the quest first. That's also the direction I need to go, I think. To get to uh, the necropolis. Carbios, this looks familiar. <laughs> Melia's puffy shorts. This looks familiar. Like, it doesn't... Obviously, it's a part of Bionis, but it doesn't look like Bionis at the moment. I think it... I think it looks similar to a, a location in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Maybe an X. But I'm just seeing this and I'm thinking to myself, that looks very, very familiar. Oh, hello. Goggles. Uh, they're pretty strong to level 68. Uh. Oh, that's junks. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what is that building in the in the lake over there? No, it's junks. It's fine. <gasps> no, 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 no! Bugger! There's old Ugas here too. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I don't want to deal with that. Oh, that's another. Oh, oh. This isn't a way up. <sighs> okay. The Oluga and the Igna are pure, really strong. I think I might have to just drop down here and go back around. The little pawns are looking at me funny. Yeah, they're looking at me from up on top of that cliff lock. Oh, okay. I knew that Melia was, uh, you know, half-breed, but uh, 
Are you kidding? No. I don't want to fight the Turkins. They look strong. Oh, grief. They're all coming. Uh, why are they still chasing me? From like a mile away? Okay, cool. Yeah, I knew that I was saying uh, I didn't think she was part Enderman. I got distracted by the Turkins, but yeah, I, I, I had a, I had a clever joke. I had a clever joke about Melia being an Enderman and I completely whiffed it. Level 63. Okay, I can, I can take you. Oh, nope. Uh, never mind. Don't need to. Fair enough. Just gonna leave me be. Nope, not gonna leave me be. Alright, fair enough. Um... Okay. Floppy crest. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, 62, 61, 62. Don't want the attention of that one. Where's the end cell? Oh, it's going that way. Brilliant. We'll go this way. I think this is the right way. I think I'm going the right way. It's hard to say. <gasps> there. Ah, there. See that red dot? That's the one. That's what we're looking for. Pororo's favorite. Oh. Yeah, that, that, that's not the thing. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for, what was it, a charm? Hang on a minute, are we going, are we even going the right direction? I don't think I'm going the right direction. They said I needed to go north. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, he's level 64. Oh. Okay. Are you shadow eye and then it turned to look at me? I swear. Zoom out. Well, if I can't uh, hit it from behind, I'm just going to hit it hard.
Um, right, okay. So, let me, hang on, I haven't got a, a quest set. Let's set this one, because I want to put the... Oh, wow, okay, no, i had gone straight past that, alright. I kind of want to just jump. Sure, why not? Looks like this is the place. Okay, return to Hamelin. Right. We'll do, we'll return to Hamelin in a moment. First things first. Tay Tay lacking charm. Physical defense down. That's useful. Um, set. Now, that's back up where we came from? Yes, it was. Okay. <sighs> I actually thought it wasn't going to be that way. I thought it, it was going to be uh, more over there. Because they said to go north, and we're actually not going north right now. <laughs> we're going southwest, so that's, uh... It's not particularly north. I have gone in directions that were far closer to north than this. Let's just say that. Still, it's really beautiful. There's some. There, there definitely is something missing, though. The the idea, you know, the the grand sense of scale that I I was always rabbiting on about. In, uh, in the main game. It just isn't here. It's still huge, but now it just looks like a world. You know? There's no looking up and seeing Bionis towering over us. Or looking across the water and seeing Maconis. But I guess that's kind of the point, isn't it? When you really think about it. That's what we we were trying to achieve. To make the world a little bit more normal. Oh. Level 73. Oh no. Oh, that one's a visual. Oh, no. Oh, it's behind. Wait, how do I get behind without... Oh, good grief. I might have to jump. And if I jump, it's gonna... Oh, if I jump, it's gonna alert them. Or not. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, I've got Tay Tay's charm. How do I get out? Oh, oh. Ah! 
There we go. Right. Now I need to... Be <gasps> Don't run. Just need to tiptoe casually past. Don't want to draw too much attention to yourself. I'm just a nobody. You don't have to eat me. I'm basically all sinew anyway. You kidding me? Okay. All right. Home free. It's hard to, to appreciate the skill, uh, the scale, without a titan looming in the distance. It really is. But like I said, it's it's got its own thing going, but it 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 does that uniqueness that Xenoblade Chronicles has isn't really there anymore. And I gotta be honest, despite the fact that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 also takes place on the backs of Titans, because they're differently shaped, they're not like, they don't look like people, they're not humanoid, it doesn't necessarily feel... Oh, he's coming this way, isn't he? Yeah, thought so. Again, it doesn't necessarily feel like, um, like you're, like that scale is there. It doesn't have that sense. There he goes. Oh, ooh, 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 I definitely do want to fight that thing. <sighs> Air Marshal Rhine's back. Okay, yeah, I definitely don't want to fight that guy. He looks dangerous. Extremely dangerous. So ten because I did that uh, that uh, affinity chance well, I got uh, ten two working stronger. I believe I think that's how it works. Ten two fights harder if I if I hit the B at the right time. I wish the Hereupon would heal me a little bit more quickly. Oh ho! Friends found? Oh, it's happiest day of, t of life of Tay Tay! Tay Tay would start to f uh, be afraid! What of dangerous bad luck forever! Okay, so I got a physical defense down, and I get Tay Tay to join. Friends seem like reliable sort of folk, and um, Tay Tay do need to see Chief One One. So maybe, what if friends say to escort Tay Tay to meet Chief? Fear of Tay Tay dwindle to tiny pebbles if surrounded by trusty allies. Tay Tay might look like wimpy pants on first blink. But cowardly exterior actually hiding real talent. Friends know archaeology center at Frontier Village. No. Surveying is indispensable skill for excavation, and Tay Tay happy to be proud member of survey department. Path of surveying fraught with alert some monsters, but Tay Tay knows secret art of sneaking and weaving between. 
can tell friends about juicy footsteppings later. Alright. So does he show me... Does he show me like a path? Tay Tay, yell team. Speciality, wishy washy. Uh... Okay, doesn't. Okay. Uh. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so that, that doesn't really tell me much. I'll just go back to uh, Hemlin and then we can continue with the story. I think we've done all of Hemlin's quests. Probably should do these ones as well though, actually, seeing as we're here. Missed. Brilliant. Ah, I got the the Ansel as well. Damn it. Oh, come on. That was so close. Uh, can I? Oh, I, I can't. I'm stuck. Right, there we go. Oh, there he goes. Yep. 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 Melia just got knocked out. Oh, damn. They did kill you, though. Does that make you stronger, too? I really, d I really do hate that saying. That's one of those sayings that uh, really does like bother me. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. What world do you live in? And how come you've never heard of diabetes? Uh, is this Hamlin? Lena. Himlin was over here. Where's he now? Uh, target is inactive now. Okay, so he's not available at the moment. Let's talk to Lena. Huh? Need something? If you do, well, I'm busy. Can it wait? Uh, no. Wait. I spoke too soon. Actually, I would like to ask you to perform some tasks for me. I would not normally reach out to strangers such as yourselves, but there is a limit to what I can achieve by myself. I've received requests for assistance from some of the younger companions, and I'd like you to resolve their issues. They should not prove too difficult, yet the volume of work is high, so I was feeling quite harried. Could you go into more detail? First, Gwyneth's request, which pertains to gathering plump wild grass. It has gotten rarer lately, hence the task of picking it is more taxing than it once was. Second, Fadeless's job of winnowing the preying caterpillar population. 
These in turn grow more and more numerous until their numbers need culling. Thirdly, the request from Loban, who was tasked with handling a number of noble brogs. Those critters have also been breeding too much for our liking and need a little population control. Gather five lots of plump wild grass, subdue three praying caterpillars, as well as two noble brogs. I'd be grateful if you could undertake these three jobs for me. If it's not too much to ask, of course. That's fine. Very good then. I shall let you get the details of each mission from the concerned parties. No problem, leave it to me. I will do everything I can to help. I will follow your... Oh wait, that's Melia. <laughs> I thought it was... <laughs> I will do everything I can to help. I will follow your lead. Okay. Let's have a quick little look at what we have. Oh, these are all, these are three different quests. Okay. Okay, interesting. I can do those in any order. Right. Let's uh, talk to this lady here and see about getting some more. Oh, wait, sell. Um. I guess I just want to sell all of this, to be fair. Um, do I have the plump grass? No, I don't seem to. Okay. All right. I'll 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 just sell all of the monster drops. That's only 6,000, though. What can I sell from here? I can sell that poison defense too, that's pretty crap. Damage heal? 16% chance of recovering 53 HP when attacked. Oh, right, yeah. Wasn't sure if that was uh, the one for attacking or being attacked, but that doesn't look useful. Um, right on. I still can't afford to buy anything. Um, so I guess I'll just change the time, skip it forward in the day, and let's see if uh, Hamelin turns up. There he is. So you've returned with the X Iron Hearts. My thanks. These ought to revitalize our injured warriors. They may be hard to stomach, but their powerful medicine, medicinal properties are sure to expedite the healing process. And since you've laid out the bait, our next round of hunting should be relatively painless. We're very much indebted to you this day. Thank you. Indebted enough to give me lots of monies? 36,000. That's not bad. Plus, I got some equipment. Let's see what we've got. Rudra jacket. Oh, that's pretty cool looking. I like that. Agility up. Yes. What else did I get? Uh, was it headgear? Oh, the hood. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's also got agility up. Uh, I might give this one to... Did that not change? Maybe it did. Okay, anyway. Oh, wait, no, she can't wear it. Oh, right, okay. That's for Shulk only. Eee, do I want the lock on? Uh, okay. Kingdom Hearts intensify. It does a bit, doesn't it? 
It does look a little Kingdom Heartsy. Shulk is looking a little bit emo here today. Uh, what do I have? Damage heal. And I can put physical defense down on the sword. Uh, I wish I had some ether up. Ether up would be great. Okay, I need to get some more... I need to get armor for the, the little sprout. Hi there. <clears throat> Staff would be nice though. Oof. So, both Shulk and Melia can use the Stella or the Brave Cap. Uh, the Stella gear is more physical defense. The Brave Cap... ...is more balanced. I think I want Shulk to have more... Uh, physical. But I think I'm going to get the... The weapon upgrade for Melia. So she can do more damage. Actually, I'll get the weapon upgrade for... Uh, for Kino as well. There we go. Oh wow, Seed Blammer, that, that's way better. Look at that. Like, that's what he's currently using. Uh, must have picked that one up, that's a little bit stronger, but this one's huge. Uh, did I pick up gloves? Yeah, Beanstalk um, Amulet, okay. So I can put a, def a Poison Defense on Kino as well. So, hang on. He said that the... The other village was elsewhere? Did he mean, like, over there? Or did he mean up here? Oh, there's a heart to heart. A quiet moment. Okay, so they're not heart to hearts. I imagine they're the same. Get and know each other in the quiet moments. Investigate a... I don't... I, this icon. To view the corresponding quiet moment. If you don't already meet the conditions for viewing a given scene, feel free to come back when you do. Any quiet moments you've investigated will be added to a list found under quiet moments. You can also use it to check the conditions for viewing each event. Okay. Um. So I need Nene in the party for this one. I guess they're similar to heart to hearts. Hope they not 
giving mum a pun. Too much trouble buckets. Trouble buckets. <laughs> nay, nay. There you are. Something the matter? Kino's been looking for you. Something about stubbing his toe? Little pun never change. Nay, nay. We'll run back later and go. There, there. <laughs> You're a good sister, Nene. Or maybe more like a mum. By the way, what were you doing out here, Nene? Nene being reminiscing about Frontier Village, tiny bit. I see. So, that's where you were living before? Yep, in Puff. Nene always adventure into Magna Forest with Brother Sister Pond and climb trees every day. I assume you were the responsible one then. <laughs> that silly question. Nopon boys all good for nothing. <laughs> it's all too much for Mama Pon to handle. So Nene have to help take care of brother sister Pon and dad Pon all full up. <laughs> I wonder what Ricky would have to say to that. Dad Pon, after he'd chosen for village hero Pon and <laughs> set off on great adventure with Mr. Shell, how's become? everywhere. <laughs> wow, I had no idea. Hmm. Wait, was this after Ricky joined us? So that must mean. Yep. Before Nene become friends with Mr. Shulk and friends here, we actually meet one year ago back in Frontier Village. Dadapon, stomach bubbly, bubbly. Oh, she was. Need food. Dad, I pump. Give crab. You're kidding. She was one of the I'm little sorry. pawns, obviously, kind of but yeah. Right Though, in my defense, you've really grown. She really you has. Like you're a whole different nopper. In nopper biology, age between ten and fifteen often experience growth spurt. That why. When compare Nene now and Nene one year ago, it's not too surprising if not realize they the same person. It's still quite a surprise. I never knew that. So they they basically they age in steps. <laughs> now Mr. Shop no can rely on post growth spurt Nene more than ever. <laughs> oh, she's really cute. I always count on Nopon. Us Homs could learn a lot from you. But Nene have these moments lately when get teeny bit lonely. Oh. Hmm? Ah, poor Hom Hom. Mr. Shulk, such chow hound. Uh, I don't think that was me. Nene, prepare some grub. Too sweet. <laughs> and now, Mr. Shulk, go Kokino and Miss Melia and tell to wash up. Really, that's. Hmm. We thought she was so good <coughs> for always taking care of Kino. But really, she's just a kid. No wonder she's lonely. Mr. Shulk, something happened? Tell me too rumbly to move, or what? <laughs> Wait, I've got it. Mama? I'll round up all the others. Then after... We can all chip in with a meal. It'll be more fun that way. Mr. Show would not say no. <laughs> Aww. Right, now get out. <laughs> Yeah, she's still, she's a kid, but she's, she's kind of been forced to take responsibility, isn't she? That's one of the things you, I guess you don't necessarily think too much about. When it comes to, um... Game the, the world that games come from because 
you know that there's stuff happening and quite often you are faced with oh yeah okay so uh this town is um in danger or you know this town has been ravaged and all the food is gone and you need to relink the supply lines and stuff like that there's always that kind of a quest but even still even knowing full well that these sorts of quests exist it very it, it definitely like a lot of games fail to uh really give you a sense of the human factor you know the person to person factor the the families that are being affected by the wars, by the great evils, the demon lord, whatever it is that's happening. I think this is going to be another favorite. Pororo's favorite. There we go. I wonder what those are for. But yeah, it, it's very rare that you see the actual... Uh, the effect on people. You see the... You see the effect on people as a group, but not the individual effects. Not the... The sacrifices that families have to go through. Zord's Daughter, that's another good example, actually. It shows how this game really does look into what could be considered the minor aspect, but it, gi it gives you a real sense of what's at stake when they do that. Especially then at the end when it was one of the Zord um, mass-produced Mechon that came to save Juju. I know it's not the same guy, but it just it kind of feels like his will is continued through those guys. It's really interesting, like, one of the things I talked about quite a lot at the beginning of the game was inherited will. Like, the will of Mechonis and the will of Bionis. The reason that Mechons and uh, Homs were fighting was because of this concept of inherited will. And I turned out to be right in, in the worst kind of way. Could you look at could you look away please? Oh wow, okay. There we go. Right, the reason I'm coming down here is because there's another uh quiet moment. Melia and Nene. Okay. Oh, why? My up button wasn't working. I was pressing up and then A and it was just, yeah, okay. These flowers, don't they smell heavenly? Miss Melia is big fan of flowers? Yes, because of my mother. When I was young, she often asked for my help with the villa's flower beds. How about you, Nene? Nene also loved flowers very much. I see. Then we have something in common. Before, when I spoke of them to a Homs friend, she said flowers are nice, but nothing beats a warm dinner. I got no understanding from her. <laughs> that was Shala. I know. <laughs> someone I can communicate with. What Miss Melia say about dinner? Oh, mm. just 
talking to myself. The dinner part wasn't really relevant. Dinner is always relevant. Big fan of dinner too. Most of all, pollen orbs from factory in Frontier Village. They so very soft and so yummy scrummy. Look, that's not. <laughs> it is though. Hold on. Mimi? When you said you love flowers, did you mean as a food stuff? There is meaning other than? Oh. oh I should have known. You're one of them. <laughs> You're one of them! <laughs> Nene, listen. Flowers are not simply special because they can be eaten. We can admire their beauty. Or use them to create ornaments and works of art. And that is a great part of their charm. Ornament. Ornament. <laughs> Long ago, Dad upon make Mum upon flower crown for give us gift. Ricky did that. That no one has hidden depths. <laughs> <clears throat> In any case, I would like it if you also. Yeah, had for someone so short, it's surprisingly house. deep. If you did, then you too, just like your mother in her own day, may know the joy she felt. Okay. The next time Nene find flowers that cannot eat, Nene will make pretty flower crown for Miss Melia. Oh. To eyes and Nene, Miss Melia look most bestest in blue. What think? I agree, actually. I appreciate the offer greatly. Weren't you originally of the regarding flowers as food persuasion? Ma? If you make pollen orbs from not eatable flowers, they bitter and not tasty. Yes, a fair point. It is just as you say. So no one see different but equal value in flowers depending on whether they're edible. Maybe it was foolish in the first place to try and choose only one while discounting the other. Well then. Melly is growing. The sign of your affection. Nay, nay, Roger that. And yet. Why do it for me? Won't Kino and Shulk feel left out? There is very good reason. Nene just want to see smiling face of Miss Melia, bright as sun rays. Oh my. Mimi? Something wrong? Nene, not say anything weird? No. Not at all. It was just how sincerely you said it. I should take a leaf out of your book. Me? Precious Nene, I look forward to the gift. Nene pull out all stops. <laughs> Although, I would feel a bit awkward were I the only one to wear one. Why don't we make them together and exchange them afterwards? Mimi? That sound wonder marvelicious. <laughs> it's real. No, in fact, is unbreakable promise. Yes, naturally. Yeah, you're you're not wrong, Kiko. The um the high end tier lifestyle is definitely <sighs> I don't know if the word is correct. It it it's definitely more privileged, isn't it? They've got a lot more going on, technologically speaking. They've got a lot more going on into Do you see what I see? There are like three of those red dots. Four! F what the heck? Oh! Right, okay. Yep, that's the wild grass, of course. Well, that's pretty good, actually, because, um... It was sometimes difficult to find things in the main game because they were blue. They were just like any of the others. Just had to keep running around until they spawned. At the very least, if they're red, they're easy to see. Okay, I gotta kill a bunch of caterpillars.
Oh, he turned to look at me just when I tried to use my backslash. Oh, yeah, hang on. I still got the, the wrong no pawn. I need my healer back. So, how many of these do I need to kill? I don't recall. I think I'm gonna have to level up the Shadow Eye. I'm gonna assume that's what it is. That perhaps it's just too low level. It's not really working to full effect. Either that or it just doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, um, there you go. Quest completed, sorted. The, I think the last thing was to get some brogs. Oh, there's another official staff, but it's a, uh, it's a gray one, so that's not going to be useful. Yeah, I need to check just in case they changed what Shadow Eye does. It'd be kind of silly if they did, but it just doesn't seem to do anything. The monsters just completely ignore it. Like, it's a, it's necessary. It's absolutely necessary for you to be able to get the attention off of Shulk because he can't do back attacks otherwise. Decreases aggro by 50%. That's exactly what it, it did before. But it just doesn't seem to work. It, it seems utterly pointless. Okay. Um... Oh, uh, let's see. Maybe if I level it, it'll get better. 60%. Decreases aggro by 60%. Hopefully it actually works. Um... Oh, and summon aqua as well. Uh, let's see. Healing gift. Okay. Uh, Healy bullet. Healing blast. Um. Heal round. Hmm. 
Yogurt stents. I didn't realize. <laughs> Yogurt stents. Right, okay. <laughs> Instead of covert stents, it's yogurt stents. Amazing. Level up noggin shot. Ooh, let's go with heal kaboom for the for the last one. And we'll we'll leave uh, we'll leave Nene until I actually have a use for her. Because I kind of... See, if I wanted the same build that I had in the previous game, I would actually have Shulk, Kino, and Nene. And Shulk and Melia would be swapped in and out. But, um... I kind of want Melia around for her ether attacks. Alright, let's get this Brog. I think I need to do two of these. Nope! Oh, yeah! No, it worked that time! Okay, so it was just that it wasn't high enough level. I'm looking up Shadow Eye, by the way, and I'm not finding any discussion about it not working. In fact, there's one discussion saying you'll need it for late game. Yeah. No, um, I think I figured it out. I think it was just too low level. I guess it's because, if you think about it, um, because it's a percentage, It's going to, um, it's going to matter a lot. You know, between 50% and 60%, that's a, that's a big deal. And it also matters, like, what your, your other allies, uh, aggro currently is. Because if they, their aggro is still higher than yours, uh, sorry, it's still lower than yours, I mean, then the enemy is still going to focus on you. Uh, I'm going to leave those Hodes and Olugas alone. Um, what's the quest log look like? Return to Lane, Lena. Oh, I could just fast travel. I'll be quicker. Ah, huh? oh, you again. I've heard back from Gwyneth and the and the rest. I'm glad their issues were resolved. While well, I have your year, here's something I realized earlier. It's quite possible that the caterpiles gather to eat the plump wild grass, and the brogs to eat the caterpiles. Seeing as you've taken out the caterpiles and the brogs, the wild grass might come back sometime soon. We'll have some food shortages to grapple with until then, but that is my problem. Lucky for everyone then that you've won me some th uh, some breathing room here, eh? I'm glad everything worked out. Thank you for the help. We're all in your debt. And sorry for looking down my nose at you all. That wasn't exactly gracious. You did that? Really? Okay. Uh, I I'm gonna go and resurrect those caterpiles and those brogs, so... Yeah. Okay, we're on 81,000. We can buy some more... ...stuff. Let's get the beanstalk hair tie. I 
think I want to go with um, the Brave Cap for Melia. Uh, you know what? No, I don't. I want to go with Stella Gear. So we'll get that one. Um, Stella Armor. Ooh, I can only get one of those. Okay, um... Let me, let me take a look at what I'm wearing, actually. Oh, that's right, I got the Rudra, the Rudra jacket. Um, so what I'll do is I'll get the, um, I'll get the upper body armor for Melia and I'll get it for the Nopon as well, for Kino. So, Stella Armor. And Beanstalk Vest. Okay. Uh, where else can I put it? Ether Defense up. Yeah, I think we can give everyone Ether Defense up. That would be useful. Uh, damage heal three, ether defense. Can I put damage heal on his weapon? No. Okay. Stick with ether defense up because that's going to be uh, more useful when we're being attacked. HP up two. Oh, actually, there we go. Ooh, okay. Um, hold on a second. Can I put HP up here? Yes, I can. Cool. So there are some gems that you can only place on armor. There are some gems that you can only place on weapons. And then there's other gems that you can place on anything. Thankfully, uh, HP up is something you can place on anything. Okay, so are there any quests? Is there any more in this area? Ether front. Ether font, sorry. Exterminate the water elementals. Oh, well, we need to go down that way anyway, so when we get to the water, I'll kill two more water elementals, and then we can move on through the cave. Is that... hang on. There's a mining node at the end of this... gully. I'm kind of hoping it's going to be a, a yellow one, a lightning one. It's a fire one. Revival HP up. That's a red? I thought revival HP was a blue. Oh, no, no, it was a red. Okay. So what Revival HP does is, if you're knocked out and revived, 
uh, you will receive more HP upon revival. Didn't mean to do that. Ah, no. Okay, uh, let's quickly... Hang on a minute. Collectibles. Collectopedia. Palm Top Elephant. An elephant so small, it can fit into the hand. Often hard to spot. That's kind of cute. It reminds me of the house hippo. I think probably only Brits would recognize that, but it was really uh, quite amusing. Hang on, let me go across the I need to go across the river. <clears throat> so there was this advert on television uh, in the UK back 10, 15 years ago, 20 years ago even. Um, and it was showing this tiny little hippo, like the size of a mouse, that apparently lives in British homes. And the whole point of the ad was just to be like, you know, don't believe everything you see on television because CGI is getting pretty good. And, um, yeah, it just showed this little, little, uh, this tiny little, um, hippopotamus that was coming out of a, a, a mouse hole in the wall. And it was adorable. <clears throat> and it was kind of funny because even though the, the whole point of the ad was don't believe everything you see, my grandmother was still like, well, where did they get the tiny hippo from then? And like that that's kind of that that's the whole thing, right? That was the whole point. That's what they were getting at. It's like you, I, I'm not saying my, my grandmother was stupid or anything. It, obviously, she's from a different time, long before CGI and all that was ever a thing, you know? And this was back when CGI was just really starting to get used. But it was, um, oh. These requirements will become visible in the quiet moments list later in the story. So I need other characters for this. Okay, interesting. There was another one, actually. I can't remember what it was. There was another, um... Another situation, and it wasn't that my grandmother thought that this thing was real. There was, um... I think it was that she kind of lacked the terminology to be able to talk about something. And I think it was... I think it was the Stuart Little movie. And my grandmother was, was like, um... It's amazing how they can get the little mouse to, to do that and my mother was was saying it's not a real mouse and my grandmother was was saying yeah I know it's not a real mouse but she she didn't have the right words to say um it's amazing the sort of technology you know the sort of CGI she didn't know how to call it But the way, the only way she could think to, to word it was to say, it's amazing that they could get the little mouse to do that. You know? It was a funny conversation, but, you know, I'm, she, she wasn't, uh, 
she wasn't silly or anything. She didn't think it was real. It was just, uh... It's, a, it's amazing how limited you can be when you don't know what the word is. Wait, where's the side of this thing? Or is it looking at me? It is, it's targeting me. Okay, that's why. Oh! No, I missed it again. Oh my goodness. I really need to get the Shaker Edge leveled up as well. Because it takes so long to activate. Oh, there we go. That's the Aqua Nebula done. Um, return to Talina. <sighs> I just got here. Is there a fast travel location? Not really. Okay. I'll just have to fast travel to the junks. She's not active. Change time. There she is. Hey. My little brother tells me that the ether organism situation is under control now. It's thanks to you, isn't it? Thank you. Okay, let's see what these do. This irregular spawning incident is only one of the many unexplained phenomena we've encountered here on the shoulder. All of us living here have to keep our wits about us. If we want to preserve our peace. Okay. Um. What did she give me? Oh, she gave me armor. Uh. Okay. What does it have? Critical up? Okay. Oh, wow. Um, I just went and bought her the Stella. Oh, wait. Actually, that's not very good. 100 defense. That's not very good. There we go. Wait, is this what he's wearing right now? Oh no, he's got the Rudra jacket on. Wow, that's uh, that armor's pretty sick. I like that. Okay. Uh, right. So I'll just fast travel back down to the bottom of the the area. Oh, there, there isn't a fast travel point there. Okay. More a barrier of modern terms and language. Yeah, exactly. That's right. It's like, when you think about it, I, I always hear people talking about, you know, if you were to go back in time and take a mobile phone with you and show it to someone from the Middle Ages, they'd burn you as a witch. I don't think that's true at all. I'm like, sure, there's gonna be some people but there's some people today that would try to burn you as a witch. Look at all the people that think that, uh, that, uh, 5G is the devil's work, you know? I'm terrified of when they actually discover that 6G is on the way. Um. There's a certain level of ignorance, and there's a certain level of stupidity, and... But I don't think going back in time to ye olde days with a mobile phone. Like, if you were to take it to someone and say, Oh, this is, we call this a mobile phone. It's technology. They'd be like, oh, okay then. You know, they wouldn't be all terrified of the scary magic tablet. 
it it really puts a sense that people really look down on people of the past but the reality is our level of intelligence like our intelligence as a human species hasn't changed in a very long time instead it's about discovering things discovering new technologies discovering ways of doing things and actually having the words for it if they don't understand what you're saying then yeah they're gonna come off as stupid because they they don't know what you're talking about you're unable to communicate to them but they are gonna feel the same way about you because you're using these nonsense words that don't mean anything So, I, I, I keep seeing it, like, I don't know why, it's just something that... That I, I... Because I like to watch, like, weird stuff on YouTube, I tend... I like, uh, channels like The Y Files, and I like Wendigoon. Wendigoon does amazing stuff when it comes to, like, weird and creepy stuff. But I, I like to gravitate towards the things that are talking about, like, time travel and stuff. And they always say the same thing. Oh, if we were to take a mobile phone back in time, it, it would be like magic. And so super futuristic technology is going to look like magic to us. I was like, no, it's not. It's going to look like technology because we have an, an understanding that our technology is going to get better. I don't, I don't look at these UFO claims and think, oh yeah, clearly it's a magic ball in the sky. No, it's technology we just don't know how it works i don't know why i went on to this rant on this rant but yeah it's something that bothers me i hate this idea that um ancient peoples were just dumb Alcamoth. and it's the same with older generations okay. of people they just don't know the words they're not stupid No, nothing like that. I'm just remembering what we heard at Companion's Cape. I have been mistaken in my thinking. The war is over and peace has been restored. We are rebuilding slowly but steadily. I'd thought that with peace came happiness. Indeed, that even here, people would embrace it with open arms. Uh, it's a shame that's not how it works. But the reality is different. Mm. The wounds have not yet fully healed. Quite. Those who lost their home. Those seeking the light. Those who bear grudges. Though joy for them is still scarce, I thought only of me. But you didn't. Not at all. The high end here of Colony 9. Actually... Everyone who remained. You worked hard for them. You, Dunban, and Atharon led by example. Yep. Just so that others could smile. Yes, yes, keep on happy hat. <laughs> keep on happy hat. Kino. Exactly. Before, Kino cried every day. Did not even want to go potty alone. Sis. <laughs> Why you bring that up? They're completely irrelevant to discussion. <laughs> you know, Mary, you know, not you, Agree to disagree. <laughs> d -d 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 anyway, cannot abandon hope. That upon's words. Hope. To become the hope of the high entia is a fate. That you choose for yourself. As long as you remember this, it is certain that you will be worthy of that name. You are the hope of the High Entia. You will not transform into a Telethia. Even after the Bionis has reawakened, you can still succeed the Imperial line. You have the power to end our suffering. I really like her eyes. She's got very pretty eyes. Friends, thank you. 
I think I can finally see now what my role here is. Onwards to Alchemoth. Wow, she's got she's got some exaggerated swing in them hips. <laughs> I uh, I'll be honest, I was thinking a little bit more cynically when she said that it doesn't work like that. I was thinking to myself, no, no, no. You take away war, you take away hatred, you take away um all these evil things and people will just find new things to be angry about. <laughs> That's where my thoughts were. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, I I have an ether up, and uh, ether up. Because exaggerated swing or not, she has no ass. Oh. Oh, you might be... <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, she, she, she's got a little bit of a bum. She got a little bit. Very little bit. <laughs> I will have you know I have an ass. That's great. Could you bring it with you sometime? It's 11. E no, wait. Evelyn. Right, okay. Qualified, certified, and fully blocked. Hands are tied. Pond Spectre Evelyn is name. Surveying new lands is game. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Our friends have impeccable timing. Evelyn in, in dire need of helping. Sounds like you've got a problem. Survey for days was finished, so Evelyn make to sit down on sitting spot over yonder for well-deserved snack break. Was just removing tasty morsel from knapsack when all of a sudden, whoosh, splash, meal thing plop straight into lake. All gone in a single eye wink, like tears standing under a waterfall. Wow. Wapple Sadi in the lake scoffed down every last piece of hard deserved footage. But no ugly fishy fish incur wrath of Evelyn and live to swim about it. Sadi will rue the day it made enemy of Evelyn. Friends, speak to Evelyn because felt urged to help Nopon in distress, right? Then please to avenge poor Evelyn. A sleep resist. Uh, okay. I, I can wipe out some sardis for you. They are quite hideous. Can I get around behind it? I don't think I can. I, yeah, I can't get around behind it because it's in the water. Start with this one. Oh, 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 that one hit me pretty hard. I have to smack it real hard. Come on, 
Okay. Next. Wait, why can't I? There you go. Quirky liver. A quirky liver. Oh, we got two. I'll do. why that happens sometimes the game just goes ah do you know what we'll finish this fight now Shadow Eye didn't do anything there. Oh, well, we got three of them. That's fine. Okay, so that means we've got a new uh, Pawn Spectre to join us. Meh, meh, meh? Oh, day of joy. Evelyn was a gog watching friends bish bashing smelly fish brutes. In fact, Evelyn feel a whole lot better now. Although, no, is no use. Tum Tum feels so empty. No energy even for sh for Shimmy? Oh, for Shimmy. Right, okay, yeah. But if friends are able to bring Evelyn Morrow Cobb from, the, from wherever bouts, may be able to kickstart metabolism. I have Morrow Cobbs. Ah, Morrow Cobbs! Munch, crunch, crunch, so tasty. Can feel life flowing back into limbses. Frank's very mash. Not after all. Okay, I'm guessing that they've joined me now. She's not nearly as well. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Come to think of it, life all about helping each other, no? Dread to think what would happen if Evelyn collapsed on road alone. Clearly friends have obligation to assure Evelyn come to no harm. So take with and deliver person safe to one one. Though, must say, made good survey progress today. Like in days of old chief who established prospectors. Retired now. When... When one one step in to take mantle, practically only ever do charity work for Frontier Village. No pond specting at all. Evelyn nearly forgot was even pond specter at first place. Okay, it's settled. Friends all ready to set off. Then it's time to deliver results of survey to Chief One One. Okay, so. Wait, Evelyn is yellow? Mm. Friends want to know about other pawn specters? Not to spoil all fun, but Evelyn have one small idea. Try here. You've learned the whereabouts of a further pawn specter. Check them on the map. Okay, I thought Evelyn was a red one. Weird. Another HP up. And a paralysis resist. Look at all these no pawns that are following me. I'm building an army of no pawns.
Okay, that looks like, uh... That looks like a waypoint, so we'll go straight there. <clears throat> Highborn Alexandra. Okay, that looks like a, uh... That looks like it could be an interesting fight. Level 64? Sure. Oh, I missed! Right, so this one's got spikes. So what spikes basically does is when I attack, it deals damage to me. But... I can remove them. Could you attack, please, Shulk? Oh, whoa, 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 what was that? Okay, maybe this was a bad idea. Yeah, this was- I think this was a bad idea. Okay. Running now. <laughs> okay. Alright, we won't do that. That was- that was a bit tough. That's something that uh, that I I kind of had to learn the first time we were playing through. Uh, not sorry, not the first. Um, while we were playing through the first part of this game, like the main game itself, is that the levels for the enemies they're not leveled in the same way as a lot of other games. Like you don't look at a level six. 60 enemy and just go, oh look, I'm level 60, I can easily take them. It's more along the lines of that that enemy is strong enough to take on a party of level 60s that are properly kitted out, that have the right gems, that have the right, uh, you know, are up to date on their weapons. If you don't have the gems, the weapons, and the armor, you're going to get rolled. That's just the way it works. And right now, I definitely do not have the gems and the the armor. I'm just basically surviving on what I've got. Not oh, missed, damn. It's not a scratch. No, it wasn't a scratch. I was dead. I was very, very dead. This area is really interesting. Look at the colors. Looks very autumnal. Ooh, there's a green node up here. Sixty-five. I could probably take a 65 because it's not like a it's not a boss Okay. 
Está bien. Oh, I missed. You know, I might get um, get the other. Uh, what's her name? Nene. Might get the armor for Nene next and swap her in. Because I'm I'm not able to like knock over. The uh, the enemies reliably. Oh 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 oh, oh okay. See that? That other Wolf got out of the way, so I couldn't hit them both. There we go, one down. Sorted. So we got wind, agility up three, topple resist, that's good. I like topple resist and agility up three. Okay, so we can improve, because I got two agility up twos here. I could swap ether defense for agility up. Go to the HP up actually. There we go. That's better. Um, let's see. Agility up three. Oh, I really need to get more armor that's actually usable. Okay. Maybe we'll encounter um, shops at the other village. I would hope so. Okay. Nice. I'm so hungry. I ate just before we started, so I shouldn't be as hungry as I currently am, but I'm really hungry. Maybe it's all the Nopon's talk of food. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm suddenly very, very hungry. Oh, I say suddenly, it's 11 o'clock already. That's not that sudden, is it? We've been going now for four hours. Oh, that's a big ass spider. Grotesque Demis. Yeah, that's the right word. Uh, I don't really, I don't, I, I don't really want any of that. I, I I really don't want any of that. I want the I want the Earth node behind it, but I I, I don't want, I, I don't want any of that. Um, let's go this way instead. 
incensed Decca Decca. Decca Decca, 10 10. Interesting. Enemies are closing in on the Pond Spectre. Save them before they get eaten. Defeat Slobbering and Tolls attacking the Pond Spectre. Oh, oh, there they are. Okay. Oh, I just realized I've got Cyclone. I forgot all about that move. There we go. Cyclone. They resisted it? Are you serious? I... I just don't understand the point of Cyclone. It seemed like such a... a useless skill. Qualified, certified, and contestified. Pond Specter Decca Decca is name. Surveying new lands is game. Decca Decca really thought it was curtains for a moment there. Friends snatched life of Decca Decca from jaws of death. When Decca Decca finished surveying area, lit monster repellent incense that got from friend, but then monsters appear. It made no sense. Why on heck monster not repel? Why attract? Meh. When Decca Decca take whiff, realize is actually monster attractant incense. Friend must have put this in by mistake. Or could this be a trial that fate pose for Decca Decca to challenge resolve? Fate call on Decca Decca to defeat monsters by own self. Well, clearly not, because we turned up. Meh meh. But Decca Decca do nothing. Just call for help from passers-by. Disappoint in self. Well, in any case, thank friends for well-timed rescue. Decca Decca, not forget this kindness. Okay, so we've got Decca Decca joining us? Yes. By the by, did friends see Chief 1-1 one -one somewhere, maybe? Decca Decca had to hand in survey results. Meh. 1-1 one -one rise in ranks very quickly. Was once rookie of team, but now chief already. Very unexpect. Must be recognition for excellent skill in pond specting. Decca Decca must follow shining example. Is key tenet of pos pond specting organization. The good it, uh, effort always recognized and rewarded. Okay, so I've leveled up. I've got three blue ones, which means it should be... Oh, wait, no, I've got two blue ones. Which means that... Uh, it should be pretty good for healing. I think that's how it works. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's all gone wrong. There we go. Uh, lock on resist. That's not wrong. Yeah, it's not... It's not the lock-on resist that I've got an issue with. I actually need the... Um... Uh, it's called... Auto Attack Stealth. It means that you don't... Or you gain less aggro for using auto attacks. Um, where am I? Do you know what? I think I'm going to have to go up. Oh, what? Melia's doing the kick thing again. Yeah, 
Like, at first, I just thought it was a cute thing that she was doing, but she's she's actually got an ability called Starlight Kick, which is that. <laughs> it's kind of adorable. Oh, 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 Melia's dying. Okay. Do you know what? It's actually... Oh, come on. It's actually, uh, like, the uh, the voice acting in this game is kind of necessary. Because what it does is... You can tell just by listening to what they're saying. Um, where you are in the combat. Like, if there's another enemy entering the fight. If you are at a particular point in the chain attack gauge. But with all these little no-pons everywhere, it's actually a lot harder to tell who's saying what and for what reason. Okay. Done. They weren't particularly difficult, they just they, there was just a lot of them. And something else that I discovered when playing this game is like a lot of little things can very easily turn very sour very quickly. Was that the the Vangs? Yeah, it is the Vangs, okay. Sure, it hits all of them, but I don't know. It's kind of weird that right at the end of the game, they give you this ability that just doesn't work. Like, it seems to be the way that they, they've uh, designed this game, really, is that they give you an ability. They give you the capability to inflict a certain status effect, like uh, break or topple or whatever. And then they give you the next stage of um, of the story. They give you enemies that are resistant to it. Like after a certain point, you just can't hit them with things. And then right at the end of the game, you get that cyclone attack. And sure, it does decent amount of damage. Especially when you consider that it's hitting all of the enemies in the area. But it's... Most enemies are resistant to the, the toppling effect that it's got. So, I don't know. It seems kind of... Pointless. I think we're going the right way. Pillar Knoll. These don't look like pillars. They look kind of like ribs. Yeah, they they kind of look like ribs. Tasty, tasty ribs. Mmm, ribs. Am I going the right way? I think so. Ooh. Jungle Quad Wings, level 64. Okay, they're not so bad. 
I get in here without being seen. Nope. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Eater removes all enemy debuffs and inflicts bleed? The heck is that? I don't recall ever seeing that one before. Interesting. Uh, let's see now. Okay, so let's just check these. I got shield, purge, ar armor. Reduces physical damage and ether damage. Buster, speed, ether, and cyclone. Okay, so armor is like a replacement for shield? Yeah, it is. So this isn't a perfect replica of the Monado by any stretch of the imagination. Oh, that looks big. Sattel Rogel. Well, when we're getting there slowly. Slowly making our way to Alchemoth. I, so I just had to stop and take a moment to look at my my little Nopon army that's uh, that's been growing. Uh, there's some collectibles here and a Rogal. I think I'll, I could take I could take one Rogal surely. I can take one. That's not a problem. Okay. So, removes all enemy debuffs and inflicts bleed. Reduces physical damage. Let's, let's use this. Nice. Let us remain vigilant. So, I need to remember... To use, um, I need to make sure to use the Monado abilities. Ooh, a life without visions. Interesting. Ah, Shulk. Did something catch your eye? You could say wow. that. <laughs> view. It's nice to see the capital like this. Being able to see it from here. It's enough to make me tense up. In all honesty, it's making me consider my position and standing. I see. My brethren, who transformed into Telethia back then, and those who survived, feeling the sadness that seeped into this land. And then, my father and brother's expectations. Calling me the hope of the High Entia. I must be an Empress worthy of taking on that mantle. But I don't know how. 
Much as I hate to admit it, I have not been able to find the right answer yet. Melia. Shulk, you of all people must surely understand. You who secured a future for all of us in that decisive battle. Yeah, but Shulk just did what he did. He wasn't, like, trying to be a god. About what my visions were. Oh? The future that Zanza wanted. That was certainly one of the things I saw. But we fought to deny that future. And in doing so, forged our own path. That's part of it, too. Mm. But now that I can no longer see them, I find myself doubting. Were we... Were we really actually determining our own fate all along? Ooh, well, good question. It's a good question. But look, you have saved me more times than I can count. That did not come about because of your visions. You used your own judgment, and you chose to act, did you not? And thanks to that, I believe I've grown as an individual as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly think I said anything funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're right. I want my actions to have meaning too. Not to craft Zanza's future, nor defy him and bend the world to a future of our design, but to give the freedom to choose. To all beings that call this world home. Except for the monsters, we killed those. Freedom to choose, huh? What would my father and brother wish for? I wonder. But I don't think you need mystic visions to work that out. Hmm? They want what's best. They just want you to be happy, right? <sighs> My gloom is no match for you, Shulk. Yeah, I'm emo Shulk now. It's My gloom is super say. edgy. To become the hope of the high end here is a fate I choose for myself. Those were the words father imparted to me. There is no need to fear. That is how my brother encouraged me. I've been so impatient and homesick. I nearly forgot those most important words. I can hear father. Lecturing me even now, chiding me for my foolishness. I give you my thanks, Shulk. It's nothing. To lack clear-cut answers is hardly a sin. But a sin it would be to cease searching for those answers altogether. For the high Entia who live on in this land. <clears throat> nay, not only the high Entia. For the sake of all the people of this world, that they may decide the future as equals. That is the vision I choose to guide me. That is the future I wish for. Yeah, if anyone could make it happen, it's you. But I won't lie to you. The road ahead will be long and arduous. I hope you won't mind me lending a hand. After all, that's the future I want too. Shulk. Indeed, it'll be my pleasure. It's an interesting concept, though, isn't it? Because <clears throat> the whole thing about uh, Xenoblade Chronicles is the fight. Uh, for your right to have a choice is to fight for your free will. If you don't, how how can you fight for free for your right to free will if you don't have free will? And that makes makes it a very interesting question. Did you ever have free will? Was that fight your choice, or was it something you were just fated to do? That's a tough one. It's a it's a difficult question. It's it's a it's a question that affects people in the real world. So much philosophy is around whether or not humans truly have free will. 
a lot of people would say that they don't. That humans can only act on data that they have accumulated and assimilated. Therefore, it's not so much free will as it is a calculation. A calculation of chance and what's better for us in that moment. It means that if a decision can be calculated, then how is it free will? And even if you were told, um, this is what you are going to choose, and you you intentionally pick the opposite, that's something else that could be easily predicted. Could you- could you look at someone else, please? So close! Bonk. Faded ID tag. Oh look, it's another one of those red ones. Uh, oh. You know what? I really don't want to jump over the edge here. There it is. I'm nearly there. Why would all those Telethia be gathering here in one place? Transporter, over here. Yeah, that that's a lot of fog king Telethia. Huh? What is it? The transporter is running. Ooh. So it is. Who started the Fog King transporter? Maybe somebody activated it. In any case, we can't afford to dally here. Agreed. Let's go. Yeah. Let's Fog King do this. Oh, there's a, a pawn specter here. You're very proud of yourself, and I can tell. <laughs> hey, I've got a reason to be Fog King proud. The Imperial Capital, Alchemoth. Looks like a Fog King disgrace. It's good to be back. Home of Miss Melly needs some weeding. And some welding. Slacking off. <laughs> Very true. We'll have our work cut out for us. Oh, Shulky Grumpy. Look up there. Shulky Grumpy. What is that thing? Look like coal in sky. That's oh no. Impossible. This world is still in its early days. That could explain the instability. That or it's still being reborn. Does that really explain this? It could do. That fog king creature. Is it from Yeah, that it's fog king creature. Ability. It could be from a previous universe. In that case it may well be lurking nearby. Let's stay together and keep a close lookout. King of Fog looks <coughs> scary to Kino. Kino, how about turn around and tell to face? Bye -bye -bye. 
Oh, that was mean. A child's voice. Where? Up there. What? Hang on. Hang on. Sorry, kid. Hold on a second. Hang on. I got dry dry here to deal with. So dry dry? Like 3-3? Three, three? Qualified. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Sneezed. I managed to catch it, though. Qualified. Certified. Highly extrovertified. Pond Spectre Dry Dry is name. Surveying New Lance's game. What brings friends around these parts? Dry Dry secretly follow bird people from far away to near away. And would friends guess it? Dry Dry only go and find bunch of bird people feathers. Dry Dry gasp with emotion. Why? For one simple reason. With feathers, Dry Dry make wind head hat and become bird person of own self. Oh dear. Oh, such is plan anyway. For now, Dry Dry still not have enough feathers. Upper level and other side all pick clean. Should be some left on this side maybe, meh meh? His dream of... Excuse me. His dream of Dry Dry becoming bird person. Please, for sake of Dry Dry. Yeah, Dry Dry really does need a slap. Bring feathers, quickly split. That's just like saying... Dry Dry wanna be a Homs. Fetch me, fetch me Homs hair and flesh. Well, not just stand there. Flock, dry, dry some feathers. No problem, leave it to me. Fetch, dry, dry the feathers and the flesh and the organs. Star drop. Oh, look, there's a red one over there. I'm assuming that's a feather. Oh, wow, yeah, there's a few of them. Okay. So we got two. How many do we need? Five. High end tier feathers. Uh, this, I, I gotta be honest, this one's kind of creeping me out. Like I said, it's like, it's like collecting skin. Okay, got the feathers. Uh, now I just need to go back to dry, dry, three, three. This one's a creepy guy. He, he's, he's really creepy. Can I point out that high entia was slaughtered coming up here? Oh yeah, true. Uh, here's some feathers. I hope there's not too much blood on them. Fortissimo! This finally allowed Dry Dry to make head hat and finally become best friend of bird people by wearing them. He's gonna become the best friend of them by wearing them. I think he misunderstands what the word friend means. He seems to have confused it with fiend. Feathers all collected. Land all inspected. Now to be rejoicing one one or rejoining one one even. Then I shall eat him. Prince did sterling job with feather findings. Surely can also find one one in a gif, two gifs tops. Dry dry join you with aplomb. One one choose this place for pond specting on whim. But seems it was inspired choice after all. Maybe slogan we repeat every day is also some kind of deal. One one is spectacular leader. Naturally come. Wait. Naturally come up with spectacular catchphrasings. 
We measure, we treasure, pawn specters till we die. Okay, um... I... I... I have a question. Is 1-1 one, one the guy who we're chasing? Like, is he the one that turned on the transporter? Is 1-1 one, one gonna turn out to be the Fog King? That's, that's a little concerning. They were saying that he, he rose up through the, the ranks really quickly. They, hang on, there's a lot of things that don't add up for 1-1. One, one because they said that he started off just doing some charity work. And then he suddenly became the leader of the entire Pawn Spectres. Hmm. Interesting. By befriending Pawn Spectres from all three teams, you have unlocked the ability to perform a special coordinated attack, the Union Strike. Doing so requires spending three bars of the party gauge, but it deals damage to enemies in a wide area and has extra effects. There are three uh, variations to choose from, each with different effects. Red Comet deals major damage to one enemy. Blue Caress heal and grant regen and debuff immunity to allies. Yellow Chaos forces Daze and Strength down on enemies in the area. The more Pawn Spectres you are able to befriend, the more powerful their Union Strike will become. When you use a Union Strike, while all three allies are capable of acting freely, an extra chance may sometimes occur. An extra chance gets you, uh, lets you perform another Union Strike without using Party Gauge. The probability of an extra chance occurring is higher the more Pawn Spectres are in a state of high tension. After a Union Strike, the party's tension will go up, while all Pawn Spectres in a state of high tension will, will revert to normal. Okay, so that's kind of like um, extra chances on chain attacks. It looks like a Rogal, but I very much doubt that a Rogal is the Fog King. The child is in danger. That's not a Rogal. Quickly. That's a, a Tequilos. Yeah, we, I don't know who that is. Alright, let's go then. Snow Wall House. How about I, I go invisible to this dude? Hey, where are you? Stop! Could you stop looking at me, please? I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try anyway.
Yeah, it doesn't look like I can hit it with, um... Yeah, I seem to be the one that's dealing the most damage, like, all the time, and therefore enemies' focuses are almost always on me. Yeah, there's no way that was the Fog King. That's what hit the junks. That brought down the junks. Then that would mean. Oh, here's the the actual fog king. It looks like we found our fog king. Yes, I would have to agree. What now, Shulk? We might as well try. Nay, nay. Understand. It won't work. You can't even land a scratch on it. Huh. Well, now. Melia, Kino. Leave to me. Eat face full of pain. <laughs> Eat face full of pain. <laughs> King of Fox. Nah, there's no way it was that easy. It's a Balrog? It does kind of look like a Balrog. <clears throat> it is just as Max has said then. Melia, let's pull back. That would seem wise. Wait, she just summoned four elements? Excuse you? I can only summon three at a time. That's some shenanigans right there. Interesting. should be far enough those things can't follow us all the way out here oh and you're certain of that yeah sure the telethia will keep us safe the telethia will what well that's what radsom said though i don't think they realize it themselves ah right your mother was one of the affected yeah Oh, I haven't thanked you yet. Thanks a million for saving me back there. Why were you alone in such a place? You very, very appropriate question. Uh, sorry, miss. He get told? Pipe down, not on obvious. <laughs> I snuck in to gather research material. But then I tripped over some rubble and... Uh... And that's when you were spotted, huh? Were you the one who activated the transporter? Yeah, I was given special permission, so I could conduct my research. That said, I normally don't go anywhere without Big Sis. You have a sister? Well, we're not actually related. We've just been living here together. If I remember correctly, you wanted to transform Telethia back? Yeah. Oh, hey! I appreciate that the high end here are like advanced race, but still. You want to come with? We 
can talk more there, where it's safe. You have your own laboratory. Not as grand as my old one, mind. We still don't understand the Fog King, or the monster that attacked Teelan. Maybe the Telethia are connected to all this. Teelan's research could help us make sense of it all. Yes. I think that rift... The thing that attacked... Oh, you mean the Fog Beast? Fog Beast? Is that what you've been calling them around here? Fog Beasts always appear around the Fog King, so the name seemed appropriate. Makes sense. Right, I'll be going on ahead. You won't be guiding us on the way. I need to clean up, else there won't be anywhere to stand. All right, see you. Hey, wait! And he's gone. He's gone now. <laughs> what is it about science boffins? Always doing whatever they please. <laughs> you get told. Yeah, you yeah. probably have it coming. <laughs> He probably do. Thrice damned fools. They think to second guess the will of the divine. Right. I was going to say I believe that that rift is a fragment of the old universe. And it seems that uh, our good and gracious friend has... Uh, is still worshipping some old gods. Okay. A shop selling arts manuals has opened. In the arts manual shop, you can exchange arts coins for arts manuals to level up your favorite arts. Oh, that's different. That's kind of like the affinity coins then. You may obtain arts coins when defeating unique monsters and fog beasts. Defeating a given monster for the first time will always grant an arts coin. Arts coins received for unique monsters and fog beasts you, def uh, you defeat before the shop opens should already be in your possession. You can check the coins you own at the arts manual shop. Okay. That's useful. Because currently, um, if I take a look at my arts, yeah, it's maxed out at the intermediate tier. Uh, actually, how much? How many points do I have? I have a lot of points. Okay, so max out that one, so I can get lots of damage. Uh, hit fills talent. Oh, stream edge. Yeah. Okay, we'll level that one. And shake an edge. Let's have a look at what we can upgrade with the Monado. Yeah, this this uh these two, these are new. So this one's got a fan shape, the same as uh that um Ether Edge. Is that what it's called? Ether Edge? Stream Edge. And then Armor is... Protection reduces physical and ether damage to the whole party. So it's basically shield for the whole party. Oh wait, no, shield was whole party. Deflects enemy talent arts of the same level or lower. And armor, oh, right, so that just, right, okay, so armor just increases your armor class, whereas shield just makes you invulnerable for 15 seconds. Okay. Uh, let's see, what do I want to level? Go with shield, go with speed. Armor is good, so I'll stick with that. 
summon flare summon aqua because those are the two major ones that i use summon copy burst end and healing gift then we've got healy bullet yes definitely want that one healing burst heal round Pure round. Um. Um. Oh, I just realized something. There's no chain attacks. So I don't even need to give. Ah, now. Okay, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I just... That changes everything. If there's no chain attacks, I don't need to set up for chain attacks. Obviously. Um... Could go with Egg Shaker, but I don't. I don't have a topple ability. That's the problem. I could just have this one focus purely on healing. Or I give them b -b boost, b -b -b boost. Instead. Okay. So let's have a look at Melia. So. See, she does have a topple ability, but it only works after, uh, as a follow up to the spear break. Hmm. Really? Like, I wouldn't know how to do it, but one thing I think I would personally change if I were making a game like this is that I wouldn't have the enemies perfectly locked on to someone like that. At the end of the day, if you're giving someone an ability like uh, a back attack ability, they're not going to be able to use it if you can't break that lock on. So I feel like the enemies should really be reacting to my movements rather than being, you know, perfectly always locked onto my position all times. Do we go? Wait, are we going the wrong way? Hold on. Yeah, we're going the wrong way. Wait. Wait, are we? Oh, no, 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 no. No, we do. We have to go this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool.
Right, yeah, yeah, okay. I, 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 for some reason, I completely mis misunderstood my position. I thought I was going that way. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so what we'll do now is we'll go to... Teelan, I believe his name was. We'll get to his town. And we'll call it there for this evening. Oh, there's a red thing in there. I'm intrigued. I'm wondering how many of those Pororo's favorites do I need to collect? Like, I'm assuming I'm going to have to give them to a Nopon named Pororo. But uh, I really don't. Like, we haven't encountered them yet, as far as I'm aware. To Teelan's lab? Yeah, that's- that's right. That's the one. Oh! Hi! Get me up! <laughs> oh, come on! It literally un- I used the- the shadow eye. It literally unlocked from me and then immediately relocked. I don't know. I just feel like it's less effective now than it was before. Are these things going to attack me? Yeah, they are because it, it's still... Still colored. Okay, right. <laughs> it is Kino who will be hero pawn. I'm sure you will, kid. I'm sure you will. I don't expect them to redo all the lines, but I do find it kind of weird that he's saying, Behold the power of the Monado. He doesn't really have a Monado. And we know what the Monado is now. Like, we understand what the Monado is. <clears throat> Unless, of course, and, you know, maybe I'm wrong on this, but... Oh, heck. Damn it. Well, that was interesting. That kind of felt more like a uh, an ultimate smash attack. 
<laughs> can I take that? I could take. I could take him now. Surely. No. Nugget army attack. Pretty much. Yeah. It's just uh, instead of having your chain attacks, you just get to use those things. Those th <laughs> those things. The uh, the no pot. <laughs> Those things, those nuggies, you get to throw your entire box of chicken nuggies at the enemy. Ah, oh, now I want chicken nuggies. I said this yesterday, I said I wanted KFC. Might have KFC at some point this weekend, but now I'm in the mood for chicken nuggies. Let's have a little look at our collector bibbles. There we go. Slowly but surely, we're filling it up. Agility down. Agility down. An aerial cloak. Okay. None of those are particularly useful in my opinion. Oh, hello. All of these... All of these will attack and they are all high level. Okay. Damn it. <laughs> I was gonna sneak up on you. Oh, I got it. Uh, let's see now. What? You summoned another one? You've got to be kidding me. That's a bit bullshit. There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, see, look at these this these Prado Upas, right? The Prado Upas are attracted by if you use um, Ether. So if you attack one of these things, one of these will attack you. But they're so small, they're really difficult to see. Oh no, did I just hit that thing flying overhead? I think I did. I did. I did. Okay.
Nice. Those do... That does loads of damage. Level 70. That's, um... Oh, no, that's, that's doable. It's only four levels higher than me. There we go. Thank goodness we've got an entire army of, uh, of Nopon. Confluent Uzava. Okay. Glad I noticed that one. Let's get this chimkin. Oh, bugger off! What? Oh, I can use Cyclone on it. And it resists. Okay. Now I missed that. Missed that by miles. What? Oh, everyone's asleep. Is there, is there a ledge or something? I keep getting caught. There is. There's a small ledge there. It's near imperceptible. Okay. We're going to go with this one on the, the big boss. Nice. Hey, that did a decent amount of uh, damage, actually. Oi, oi. No, 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 no. You attacked me. You were going to live with the consequences. Don't go buggering off. Oh, no, 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 I'm about to live with the consequences. Or die with them, perhaps. This thing is actually quite strong. Whoa, what? Uh, someone res me, please. Thank you. I don't even know what that was that hit me then. I genuinely have no idea what hit me then. Scapula lens? Okay. Is that what remains of the Aerith Sea? Like, the Aerith Sea looked like it was a sea, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, 
well, a sea, yes, an inland sea that was made entirely out of ether, or uh, at the very least, ether-infused water. That is a turtle. And now there's like all these uh, auroras, and I wonder if that might be the Aerith Sea. Satel Torta. Uh, it'll attack on seeing you. It's fine. We'll be able to take it. Not a problem. Oh, it actually says it topples enemies that are suffering from break. Oh, that's why it's saying resist. Oh, I'm, I'm just an idiot. Okay. I thought it forced a topple. So like, oh, 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 crap. Yeah, nearly there. Missed. Missed. Damn. All right, we got it. No, oh, I missed. There you go. Yeah, these th this new um, pond spec. Oh, there's three of them there. Uh, this pond specter mechanic is actually really interesting. Am I might go in the wrong way? I feel like I'm going the wrong way. I really feel like I'm going the wrong way now. This is, this area is really dangerous. I'm starting to feel like there's no way that a kid went through here. Oh, but there is a pond specter right there. No, 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 Qualified, certified, deified, Pond Spectre no, no, no is name. But what is in name? Peh. Ahem. It seemed fate ordain us to meet. Laws of space-time converge on single point, for one of Pond Spectre blood cannot but happen. Time is nigh. After eons of wait, Dreams soon come to fruition. Cut down miscreant. Thing of mag mag Thing of Magica 13 must fall. Let this act fan flames of rebellion. An upturned world of shambles. Meh? Friends want to know more about the Thing of Magica 13? And why world is in shambles? 
Now is not time nor place for expositioning. Firstly, must make pact with Nonona, and to do so, must slay odious fiend that lie beyond. Be slayal of one untidy, surely lead friends to original proof. Then, and only then, may friends begin on path of reaching true law. Those were words. Those were certainly words. Oh my goodness. That, they, oh, they were words. Threads of fateliness. Please to weave verbal winding way. Good grief. It's too late for this. Forbidden Hushland. That was named by a no pun. Oh, oh, oh. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Why can't I run away? Why can't I run away? Just go, 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 go. Wait, where am I running to? Straight into a bunch of tortoises. Um. Man, they've got, they've got some visual range from up there. <sighs> oh, I thought it would have seen me then. I'm really thinking this is the wrong way. Level 71, that's not fun. Could you come back? Ow! Oh! No! That's not what I wanted at all! I noticed! Do you know what? Run. Another quad wing, of course it is. Oh my goodness, what the heck? We got a Godzilla versus Kong situation going on over here. I'm gonna let them stare at each other and uh, not get in their way. This can't be the right way. Quarry Colonnade. I don't think this is the right way at all. It's like the Yip Yips got hold of a dictionary and tried to talk to humans with it. Something like that, yeah. Whoa, that's a huge ether deposit. And that's a bloody big spider. Okay, I've gone the wrong way. Yeah, I've I've definitely 100% gone the wrong way. Uh, I'm going to go back to I'm gonna go back to here. Uh, we're gonna jump off here again. <laughs> oh, that's a bit further down than I thought. Okay. Not my best plan. Uh, Cinnabar Plateau. Any relation to Cinnabar Island? Does Pokemon take place in the Xenoblade universe? Yeah, it looks like, uh, look, the, it seems like I should have just crossed the stream. But I thought you never crossed the streams. 
See, that's 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 the reason why. That's the only reason I was confused. That's the only reason I, I got lost was because you, you, you had to cross the stream, but you never cross the streams. Eh, you just don't do that. It's not my fault. Uh, we got some Ignas here. Or oh, Chromas. Same same deal. Ooh, another palm top elephant. Have I put you in the book yet? Yes. What does this no pawn want? For Fora. Qualified, certified, making world more purified. Pawn Spectre for Fora is name. Surveying new lands is game. Oh, why are you surprised for Fora like that? Made for Fora, recite whole Pawn Spectre spiel and now survey in big shambles. How friends can make up for, eh? Hope not thinking can make teensy apology and walk away. <laughs> I refuse to apologize. For four are going to have to ask help with small matter. Then we'll let friends off proverbial hook. Could you go uh, could you go into more detail? So friends will listen? Oh goody. For four are new friends were citizens of upstanding moral character. Small matter of nuisance, Chroma, on other side of Zen thoroughfare. Right hand side. They keep getting in way of Fofora. Fofora? I just realized that's four. Four. There we go. Fofora is still busy mapping out area, so it would be giant help if friends could remove Chroma from picture, please. Inconvenient Chroma. Okay. These ones? They don't have a, uh... They don't have, like, a, a marker above them. Wait, who this? Lavian. Huh? Hey, c could I get a look at that ID tag you've got there? Oh, yeah, I picked up an ID tag. Yeah. Yeah, I knew I recognized it. It's my brother's. There's no mistaking it. Would you mind giving it to me? Uh, sure. Thanks. You don't know how happy this makes me. But if this fell out of the Somnivore Lexos. Yes, it did. That's right. It did. It fell out of the Lexos. That means at long last my brother found his nemesis and lost. You know, when we were... We were oh, bloody hell. You know, when we were evacuating the capital, it was him that drew the monsters off to buy us enough time to escape. If it wasn't for him, we'd never have made it as far as Gra as Grandel. He was our savior. He really was. Afterwards, he must have learned somehow that the Somnivore Lexos could be found at Sultanar Seal Island. I'm certain he went there to remove the beast and secure a path for anyone coming from Alchemoth after us. Hey, by the way, my brother also had this bangle. There was a family heirloom. You haven't found that too, have you? I uh, don't think so. You haven't, huh? That's a shame. Last I saw him, he was heading for the Barrow Plaza towards Cinnabar Plateau. I've already searched between Cinnabar Plateau and here, but found nothing. If you were willing to help, could you look for the bangle on the plateau beyond? I'd be most thankful if you brought it to me. Okay. It's a decorated bangle. I hope you'll have more luck than I did. No problem, leave it to me. Trust in here upon Kino, and day will be saved. Shoulder stone scree. Ooh, 
Ouf. Oh, that's it. That's it there. Okay, cool. Blaze chain. Hang on a minute. Excellent. Have I told you you do not go there alone? But I really needed that material. Doesn't matter. Why did you disobey me? If something happened to you, well, oh, she's got some sharp eyes. <gasps> Tyrea? Melia? Huh? Wait a second. You know Melia, big sis? Tyrea's your big sis. Do you, I just realized what she's wearing. She's one of the assassins. Right. That explains how you came to the capital just in time to save Teelan's skin. Oh, uh, sorry. Sorry for the trouble. Truly. Although I am glad you were there. Yeah, you really helped me out, Shulk, Miss Melia. And you too, Kino, Nene. Where did they find a five-year-old oh, that smoked a pack Nene a day for the, the entirety of their lives? With his research. Yes, well... Tyrea, she's changed. Thielen, I'm going outside for a bit. <laughs> Are we going to talk about his halo? Um, that's a really good question as well. I'm not too sure about that myself it could just be a part of their technology like the wings that know you all knew big sis Tyrea. How'd you meet each other? melia's got on her armor well that's because Tyrea and i share an older brother wait huh? what does that mean you and her are sisters then sisters. half sisters no it's rather more complicated but sisters, we are not. Hmm. But she was one of the assassins. I didn't know that they were related. From way back. <clears throat> what was she like? Hmm? I've only known her here, in this place, so I gotta wonder how she was before. She... she was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah... She was dedicated to her work. Strong, there we go. Both in body and in her conviction for doing what she thought was right. There we go. Wow. Yep. Pretty much the same as how she is now then. When it comes to our research, she's even more committed than I am. So she has not forgotten her mother. Where did you and Tyrea meet? It was when, when she saved me from the Fog King. On a trip to Alchemoth, like today. <laughs> no, no, no. At the time, everyone was still living there. Before oh. the King showed up. Yeah, and then after we all escaped, I was kind of on my own. So Tyrea brought me here for safety. One moment. Teelan, was your father not Hey Max, welcome out? to the stream. How are you doing? My father. My father was killed by the Fog King. Is that so? I'm sorry. Tulan just like Kino. Brave little pun. I think Tired? I'll Same. Too. We'll be finishing up very soon. Go ahead. I've still got <clears throat> things to ask Tulan. Oh, I just finished a gig in Nanda. Nice. Thank you. Shan't be long. Have you just got home or are you still there? Miss Melly, Kino go too. Kino, please read room. <laughs> I should be in bed, but I'm running my supermarket. Tyrea. 
Oh, did you see that? Galen was behind the wind, behind the wall. After everything, I, I wondered. Is it? Is his name? Was his name Galen? Then, at some point. Or Galleon, or something like that. He was actually hiding behind the wall. I, I caught a glimpse of him there. And so, when the capital fell here, I thought Mother had finally granted me my boon. But it was full of Telethia. And survivors cast Gelgar, that's it. That's it. Not to mention this Fog King. Yes. He'd be the one to end. Oh, he's gone now. Or so I thought. Until fate. <laughs> and death ceased to be an option. Your mother. She did not grant you a dying place. She gave you our future by crossing your path with Teelans. My helping with Teelans research is a simple matter of give and take. If you really believed that, you would not have treated him half so warmly. <laughs> I can tell that when you look at Teelan, you see family. Even if it was once transactional, his research concerns the future of our race. That fact remains. The future of the High End here, huh? And what about you? Me? You must have heard. Our brethren in this Oh wait, is that him there now? Yes. You are the Imperial successor. The Crown Princess, war or no war. No. Empress now. What will you do about the future of our race? I have not planned that far ahead. However, I know enough to realize what I must do right now. I hope to see it. This future you will build for us. And when I do, I hope I'll be able to accept what I now am. Oh, I would have preferred if they kept that as just a, um, just a little hint. What is this guy's deal? It's like, on one hand, it seems like he wants to help, but on the other hand, it seems like he doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, no, I know he's I know he's a crossbreed. Hmm. A little. He said that for all the details, we ought to talk to Radzum in Grandal. Meeting should be no problem. Tilan say he sent word to guard a Grandal ramparts to let friends through. Before we visit this Radzum, I have something I wish to discuss with you all. What is matter now? The High Endia who live here now have lost all hope for the future. I have a duty. As the Imperial successor, I must safeguard their future. This will sound selfish, I know, but will you stand with me? Of course I will, Malia. Kino, too. And also Nene. Thank you. It means a lot to me. It's really interesting because yeah, the the high end tier at the moment are kind of in a a weird position after most of them got turned into Telethia. Um, the ones that are left are left basically holding the bag. They're just like, okay, so what do we even do? What can we even do? Huh. This pod looks interesting. That book looks pretty cool too. But uh no, this pod looks interesting. 
it's glow. Uh, I, I, I noticed it's glow, and that's what kind of drawn me to it, but it looks kind of familiar. Is Master Chief inside there? <clears throat> All right. So we're going to save it right there. And we're going to call it there for this evening. There we go. I'm going to move us over to chatting. There we go. Or oh, the Doom Slayer. Yeah, it's kind of strange. Um, I don't know what to think about that whole situation because... She's right in the sense that the the High Entia have lost their purpose. The High Entia were created, even though it was a purpose that they they didn't know, that they were never, you know. They weren't they didn't know that they were born to die, you know? But nonetheless, they always knew that they had a purpose. The downside of what Shulk has done in recreating the world is that all sense of purpose is gone. The only purpose you have is the purpose you make for yourself. And that purpose is temporal. You know, what does it matter what you think your purpose is? You're going to die one day. And that's, it, it's over now. The High Entia had an eternal purpose. They had a reason to exist. They were born to serve what they believed was God. And now that's gone. Completely stripped from them. And not only that, but more than half of their number have been turned into Telethia. So the few that are left have no purpose no family, no job, no city, no home. It's a really rough existence. It's it's quite depressing. It, it's it's horrible. It just goes to show that even a wish seemingly as beneficial to everyone as everyone has the right to choose their own fate. Everyone has the ability to take fate and destiny into their own hands and create the, their destiny for themselves. That makes sense to a, to a Homs on a logical perspective, but the logic of the Hyentia is not the same. The, ho the logic of the Nopon is not the same. It doesn't necessarily make much sense because of the perspective that they come from. They haven't been able to escape to Colony 906. As far as we're aware, they haven't. There, there are still a few in this area that are still hanging on to their old home. quite horrible like you said it it feels kind of hopeless but um, I guess that's that's the whole thing isn't it now it's finding hope it's teaching those who had a purpose to find their own purpose It's so much easier when your purpose is given to you by a god. Yeah. I don't I don't currently have an answer for this, unfortunately. I I wish I did. I wish I had something that I could say, but it genuinely just feels like... 
there's no easy way for this. I can't, I can't kill a monster and suddenly everyone's got purpose again. That's the, that is the cost of free will. The only purpose you have is that which you give yourself. That's a big cost. It makes me think about um, Dante's Inferno. Or actually, I think it's, uh, sorry, Paradise Lost, not Dante's Inferno, Paradise Lost. It's when, when Lucifer has fallen in Paradise Lost and he goes to Earth. He starts to cry because he realizes what he has given up. He stood at the at the right hand of God and he knew fully entirely the entire purpose of his existence his being was filled with that knowledge of who and what he was. And then he gave that all up into uncertainty. And that's kind of what's happened here, but it wasn't even their choice. Shulk chose it for them. It really makes you think, doesn't it? Really makes you think. But I'm not going to end it on a on a downer. It is kind of a downer spot to end though, right? <laughs> Just find out that uh, that there's a lot of hyantia around here and they, they just have no purpose in life anymore. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty rough. But, uh, you know, like I said, you could see it as a cost. You could see it that it's a downside that you lose that sense of purpose that is given to you. On the other hand, you can embrace the freedom to make your own purpose in life. And it can be hard. And you can make mistakes. You can cho make the wrong choices. But I think I'm always going to be happy that the choices were mine. That I made them. That I might make a I may have made mistakes in my past. A lot of mistakes in my past. But they were mine to make. And I was the one that made them. I did what I did at that time, whether it be right or wrong. Because that's where I felt I should do at that time. And so long as I'm happy knowing that I did what was right by myself, by others, then I can be proud of those choices, regardless of how they turned out. That's not to say that Good intentions are always more important than the outcome. Absolutely not. Sometimes the outcome can be pretty bad. But so long as we do right by ourselves, that we stand by our morality, that we stand on our own ethics, and we do what we feel is right, but when we when it comes to that moment of judgment can we judge ourselves and say i did what was right at the time and i think that's all that we can really ask of ourselves to do what is right at the time we can't predict the future we we don't have access to uh, laplace's demon we can't know how every possible outcome 
is going to result a hundred years down the line. If we go back 300 years, 400, five, if we go back thousands of years, is it possible to put on the shoulders of those people the sins committed by the most terrible of people? Like Mr. Hankety Clankety from World War II. Can we say it's their fault? I don't think so. Even if the decisions they made that they made led to the rise of Germany in that era. Led to the rise of that particular madman. We can't put blame on those people that were just doing what they felt were right at the time. Because they couldn't tell the future. It's all up to whether or not you're willing to live by that rule. It's all up to whether or not you feel you can look at yourself, you can be self-reflective, and that's the important thing. It's something which I feel like a lot of people have trouble with today. Being self-reflective. To look at oneself and be honest with yourself. To be able to say, you know what, I, I done goofed. To be able to say, you know what, this was wrong of me. I can, tr but I can try to change that. So many people are so afraid. They're so offended by the idea of admitting fault. Don't be. Because that shows strength of character. The ability to look at oneself and say, you know what, I screwed up. That is strength of character. There's a reason that they say that pride is a sin. It's okay to be proud of your work. It's okay to be proud of the things that you've accomplished. But don't let pride get in the way of admitting that you are wrong and putting things right. It's been a quiet one tonight. Um, it's nearly 1am. Bloody hell. It's, it's so... It's crazy how quickly time can get away from us when we're playing Xenoblade. We're just basically running around for hours, collecting collectibles, fighting monsters and such, but it's... It's a really cool concept, the way that they've played, the way that they've made this game, especially a lot of the new mechanics that they've included with the the Pond Spectres, the two Nopon characters. The two new Nopon characters are so good. To be able to bring in Shulk and Melia together for this adventure, I really like that as well. Uh, you know, setting them aside, bringing them together on their own and then these the, the these no pawn characters they they're brand new but they they have so much heart they're already very full characters and i couldn't imagine this game without them they've done a really good job um making this this sequel this, this is epilogue chapter so many years later as well like the original xenoblade came out on the wii and then all these years later we get the definitive edition on nintendo switch and they added this additional chapter this epilogue to the story and aside from there is one thing i will point out I did notice that Melia's voice acting, she's got a bit of a lower voice. And uh, I, I did notice the difference almost immediately, but uh, it still feels pretty good. The writers have done a great job, they really have. The writers have done a good job, the uh, 
the artists have done an amazing job, as always. You know, they brought that feeling back. The world still looks like uh, it's a part of Bionis, which it is. Unlike the rest of the world, which now looks like a world, this still feels like Bionis. We're still hovering very high above the, the ground and the waters below. Even though we don't see Bionis, and even though we don't see Mechonis, we do see that uh, this is separate. Being a floating island with the floating city of Alchemoth, it really does set itself separately from the rest of the world. And that's really interesting because we, at the end of the uh, the main game in the last stream, I talked about the Monado and how the Monado is related to the Gnostic perspective on, um, you know, the Monad, the Dyad, and then multiples and sacred geometry and the power of numerology and stuff like that. A part of it, Alchemos is quite clearly connected to alchemy. You know? It, it, that's what it is. Alchemy. And from a purely uh, practical perspective, alchemy is a precursor to physics, chemistry, biology. It's a precursor to modern science. But there's a spiritual aspect to it as well. A big part of alchemy is claiming that power. The gods have a power. God has a power, and through that power, he created the world. And the Gnostics, through alchemy, want to claim that power. It's a very similar struggle to what we see in um, in this game. You know, that I want to claim this power of godhood, not to be a god, but to be able to grant people the ability to um, to make choices for themselves. That's alchemy. The 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 growth of the spirit. It's a part of alchemy. It's a part of um, it's a part of Gnostic teaching. Another midnight stream. Um, no, we've been going for like five and a half hours. <laughs> but we are finishing now. I just hope for these characters that they, they find that purpose. The world has been unlocked for them. All the chaos of the world is at their feet. And it's their job to make sense of it. At very least, make sense of it within the part of the world they occupy. So we'll be back with more Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected on... Tuesday. I actually thought that this wouldn't take very long. I thought it was going to be a rather short story, but now that we're playing it, I'm starting to think that this could go on for a little while. So, I'll be back on, like I said, next Tuesday with more Xenoblade Chronicles Future Connected. Um, and I'll be back tomorrow with Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. So I hope you'll come and join me for that one. Um, I didn't bring it up earlier, and I really should have. The reason that we started a bit late today was simply because I have not been sleeping. So, I just want everyone to know, just in case, that I'm going to try to start at the regular time, but if necessary, I may have to push some of the streams back. Because I'm just not sleeping. It's it's just not happening. I am so tired. 
seems like it's its own game for now. I don't think it's going to be even close to the length of uh, Xenoblade Chronicles, but it does really have... It's going to have, like, its own story arc, you know? It's, it's going to... I reckon it's probably going to be around 15 hours long. So, maybe three or four streams. Depends. But yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I'm not sleeping. I just haven't been able to sleep. And it's outside of my control, too. Because uh, the apartment block next to us is having work done. And I usually... I'm nocturnal, so I usually sleep during the day. But with the power tools and things that they're using, they're keeping me awake. And I can't really complain about it. I have no right to complain. They're, they're doing the work when they're supposed to, to, between the hours that they've been given. The problem is that, uh, that those aren't the hours that I keep, personally. So, it's rough. It um, I'm having difficulty right now. So, if I end up pushing back a stream, um, just know that that's probably the reason why. Possibly that I just needed some more time in bed. I'm gonna try to not stay up for very long tonight though. Um, I don't think doing the chapters for this stream is gonna be difficult. Oh, that's another thing, yes. The chapters from yesterday's stream. Um, I couldn't do it. Something happened, something went wrong. So when I tried to close OBS, it crashed. And when it crashed, it still said on YouTube that I was streaming. Even though it was finished. Even though that I wasn't actually streaming anymore. So I had to go into YouTube and manually close the stream. And then YouTube kept crashing on me every time I tried to edit the stream. So, uh, I didn't get an opportunity to uh, do the chapters on that one. So I'm probably going to do that one tonight, as well as the chapters for this stream. Um, assuming that it works. Assuming that I'm able to. So, uh, after that, then I'm just going to, you know, go off to bed and try to get some sleep, because I'm exhausted. And hopefully tomorrow, when we start Oracle of Ages, I'll be a little bit more on the ball. I'm... I'm really... See, this is the thing, I, I just said it now, talking about the whole... Um... So long as you're happy with the choices and the decisions that you've made. I'm currently not. I'll be honest with you guys, I really... I'm, I'm not. There are a lot of things that has been happening recently, and even though it's outside of my control, a lot of it, I'm not happy with the results that come from it. My streams have been boring. I've not felt invested, and I want to change that. I want to change that feeling. I want to feel like I, I want to be... Like, I want to be here, that I want to be playing these games. And I do, like, when we have a moment where we're all chatting together or we're playing together or what have you, that's great. I really like that. It's a great time, and... Unfortunately, the problem is because of everything else, I find it difficult to get into that state, to get on that roll. But I'm going to keep trying. That's the other thing. That's the thing that I am proud of. Is that I'm going to keep trying. And I hope that you'll all just bear with me for a moment while I reset my life. Because things need to... things desperately need to change. So if you'll just stick with me for a little bit. I promise things are going to get better. So, 
A big thank you to everyone who has joined us today for this stream. Uh, it's been a quiet one, but I I, I know that some people uh, were um, were lurking. That's fine too. Like I, I've always said that it's fine. I don't mind if you lurk. It's all good. It's been a bit of a quiet one though, and I I can say that there's definitely some positive personal growth. Because despite the fact that it's mostly just been me and Kiko chatting, I don't really feel bad about it. Once upon a time, I would feel terrible about a stream like this, that there was no one here chatting. But um, I don't feel that way anymore. A part of that is because it's YouTube. And so uh, here's a shout out to the VOD crew that are gonna watch it later really appreciate that you guys you know are always a part of this so if you've gotten this far do leave a comment down below just let me know how you're doing just say hey how's things and I look forward to your big benefit is the VODs yeah absolutely Oh, YouTube benefit is VODs. Yeah, yeah. And it really is. It really is. It means a lot. Because, like, I know that even if... Even if there's no one in the chat... Uh, I know full well that... Uh, that there will be at some point in the future. Whenever that future may be. You're not doing too well, Tim? Maybe, um, I mean, we, we're, we're coming to the end here, so maybe send me a message on Gilded. If you want to chat, you're always welcome to send me a message. And with that one, I think we'll call it there for this evening. As always, be good to yourselves, be excellent to each other, play more video games, and until I see you, I wish you all peace and high scores. Good night, everyone. <laughs>